Hello, everybody. Hey, guys. Hello, hello, hello. Oh. How's everybody doing today? Good. I'm doing pretty good. Yeah? Yeah. Doing yeah. well, thanks. Yourself? Pretty good, pretty good. I have a feeling, I have a feeling that this is going to be a good one. <laughs> Do you guys feel it? Do you guys feel it, too? I believe I have what the doctors call a the fever. The fever. <laughs> <laughs> the fever. Flatoutfever.com. Zika virus? What? Uh, this, this is the, the Flat Out Fever podcast. That's it. Maybe Episode right. fifty-one, lots, lo- lots of good things. Lots of things to talk about. Yeah, bit of an announcement. Absolutely. Wait, uh, first case. Okay, so, uh, Flat Fever, we're on uh, uh, your Twitter. internets. You're all. We're all up in Flat your internet. Fever on Twitter. Yeah. Uh, we're we're on Reddit. We're on uh, if, uh, you know show at flatofever If you ever want to email us anything, uh, and uh, we're live on YouTube right now. Uh, we also ha- have a podcast that you can subscribe on iTunes Boom. as well as uh, uh, just if you have like a regular podcast radio for, for Android. Uh, it's all on our website, Um And yes, we begin with a very important announcement. Pre-announced last week. We mentioned it. We mentioned we'd be mentioning it. <laughs> I, <I'm laughs> this is a giveaway. So yeah, what, what is it? What, what, are we, what, are we no giving, what are we giving away, guys? We are giving away two tickets to the Montreal Grand Prix. The this Canadian year. Grand Prix. Uh, that's the Canadian Grand Prix in Montreal. Montreal. In Montreal. Uh, these are two GA tickets. Uh, yours to keep and to use for, for, for the full three days. So this is not Absolutely. just for the Grand Prix. This is going to be uh, full weekend passes. Two, uh, two, se- two full sets of weekend passes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For you and a friend or, you know, whatever. Whoever. Whoever. <laughs> Dogs don't need tickets. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's the internet. So whoever you want to bring, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's yours. They're yours. Um, now, uh, when is this gonna become go, uh, going live? Contest announced today. Open today. Contest is open. Contest is open right now. Yeah, you can send your submissions. How can you say? How can they send uh, their submissions? Let's talk about what they sh- are submitting first. How about that? Good call. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've sort of come to the conclusion after much debate um, that uh, you guys are out to create content, um, some sort of art piece, uh, uh, some sort of creative endeavor, if you will, um, about the Montreal Grand Prix, something uh, you like the most about it. We want to really just... A song, a video, a sculpture. Anything. 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 You should send us a picture, something. You, you can make a video, upload it on YouTube, and tag us, uh, and, and we'll go check it out. You can call in. Now, it, it's uh, it, the main, the overarching, uh, overarching theme has to be the Canadian Grand Prix. Now, this can be Canadian Grand Prix history or Canadian Grand Prix, uh, the, the venue for it, your own stories Villeneuve about family. Yeah, the, uh, the, the name of the Grand Prix is Circus Gilles Villeneuve. If you want to throw in a, 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 any Villeneuve factoid or any Villeneuve <laughs> stories, are very much welcome. Uh, yeah, send it by. What's going on here? Sorry, this is S- cell phone noises. Sorry. Uh, these to enter, all you have to do is subscribe to us on Twitter and YouTube, and you can submit your submissions through the, either of those two or you, by email. To be eligible, though, that the eligi- the only eligibility requirements are that you have to be uh, subscribed to us on uh, on YouTube and like follow. Uh, yeah, subscribe to us on YouTube and follow us on Twitter. Correct. That seems very reasonable. Yeah, to me. And again, yeah. So you can send in your. So again, you can send in your your submission by emailing us. Uh, the email is going to be contest at flatofever dot com. Um, you can uh, check us out on YouTube and send us your subscription there, or you can tweet us your subscription at flatoutfever. The contest will run for six weeks from today, closing April twenty sixth. Mm-hmm. Will be the last day to enter. One week from that date. We'll announce the winner. That'll yep. be May 3rd. That gives you six weeks to plan. Six weeks minus two days. You got six weeks to figure out how to get yourself to Montreal, unless you already live there, which would be good for you. Yeah, yeah that'd be pretty great. Figure yeah, out how to get there, s- arrange some accommodations. Uh, let's not forget or that uh, even if you don't win, there are consolation prizes. Uh, correct. Second and third place, runners-up. 
So we've uh, decided that uh, uh, second place will get um, two t-shirts, one from Flat Out Fever and then one from my band, Bamboo, also one of our newest CDs. Yeah. You'll love it. And then second place is just one t-shirt. And of course, uh, whatever size uh, that you are. We'll definitely get your information. But yeah, uh, let's let's start with these submissions. Again, uh, anything related to the Canadian Grand Prix or Canada or whatever. You know what? It just If you want to make a love song about poutine, I'll allow that. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Yeah. I have a pretty good feeling when we when we get that winning submission, we'll know it. Yeah. yeah. We're going to know it. Oh, yeah. It's a very heart subjective. Of heart. Just so that there's absolutely no, you know... Uh, no mistake here, you know. Make no mistake here. This, this is one. I'm being 100 percent transparent here. We're the judges. Yeah, <laughs> we're the three judges. This is a very subjective contest, yeah. but up for stake is 250 some bucks worth of tickets for real. Honestly, we, I we cannot. Got I cannot say this enough. I, I said it last time. I say it every time that we talk. Uh, Mike, you can attest to this. Uh, you really like. You can't get a sense of the cars and 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 of the sport. You know the the, the, yeah. the grandiosity of it all. Oh, absolutely! Unless you go to a Grand Prix, really. I, I had a smile <laughs> on my like it, it, it was qualifying. We went in, <laughs> yeah. and I just had this smile from ear to ear. Just it was insane how uh, the amount of people and just like sort of the love for the sport that I had no idea really existed. It's, Montreal is sick. Yeah. They they really take like. It, it, F1 takes over the city for that weekend. It's amazing. Anyway. Uh, you can find all this stuff on flatofever.com. Yeah, flatofever.com. There's going to be a, um, a link there right on the navigation. Uh, it's going to have all the details. We'll update Contest that uh, later today. And as well as on our YouTube, uh, we're going to have uh, all the details as well. And contests at flatoutfever.com. If you're a listener right now, if you're just a listener of a podcast, uh, please do check out the details on the website whenever you get a chance. Yeah. yeah. Uh, moving on. Here we go. Also, another announcement before we get to the show. Uh, if you are within the Toronto area, we are going to have... I, I know that we're a little bit late in actually announcing this, but we are going to have screenings, actually, of all of the Grand Prix for the year at Betty's, just like we did Full last season. year. Uh, more details for that uh, as well on the website. You will see uh, the link for it. So, again, it's just F1 at Betty's is happening for uh, for this uh, weekend's race, actually. Boom. It's Torontonians, be, yes. Mississaugians, Bramptonians. Hey, we have people from Waterloo even come out. Waterlooians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah isn't that crazy? Yeah, it was pretty cool. And yeah, fly in. <laughs> yeah. yeah, whatever you it's want. We're going to be at, at Betty's this Sunday, uh, March the 20th. Uh, we're not going to be doing the race live because bars aren't open at that time. But uh, we are going to be doing it at from 2 to 6. We're going to have the pre-show and uh, and the race right after. Uh, come, it's a good time. I'll be drinking beers in the Caribbean Sea, but I'll be at the other ones. Yeah. The rest of them. Absolutely. Every race and the live races, when they appear in our time zones, will be live. Absolutely. That's it. Uh, as well, before we finally get to this show, Fantasy Leagues. We'll be playing UDT. Gopher. <laughs> Was it? Badger. 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 Badger, Badger Gopher. Beaver. <laughs> yeah so if you'd like to join us uh join start your fantasy teams before the first race starts you can get your full point allotment for the year and uh, we'll be setting up a league as we did last year that you can compete with us it's all for fun badgergp.com you can set up a fantasy team there and we'll also be playing formula one.udt.co.za za or za <laughs> if you're british or american Canadian or Canadian. <laughs> there's not three ways to say it. No. But anyways, there's also a fantasy F1 league there. They're both really fun. Both simple graphical interfaces. Both have race by race predictions for points and uh, try to beat us. Yeah. We can we'll see who can win. We'll put that also uh, all the information for that under the reach us section of our website. Mm -hmm. Now, no let's prizes, get to it. Just fun. Let's get to it because this weekend is one of my favorite Grand Prix yeah. of the year. Yeah, I really do love this track, actually. It's a good mm -hmm. season opener. Australia, Melbs, Melbourne. If you are new to F1, um, and I, I know that there's some of you out there um, that are migrating from NASCAR. Hello, thank you, welcome. Um, <laughs> if you're new to F1, you, don't, you won't be familiar with this, but it, it has become quite a bit of a tradition that the, every year... The opener is in Australia. It has been like that for a number of years now. 19. This is the... Tw there's been 21 Australian Grand Prix. No, but not all of them have been the... F right. This is the 22nd. 19 of those. The past 19 have been... So this might be the 20th season opener? 21st. In, in Melbourne. 20th. The 23rd race? 20th was last year. Damn it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
Okay. I must have been looking at uh, year old information. <laughs> <laughs> add one number to what I said. Yeah. <laughs> Every number I said, add plus one. It's it, it's great. Yeah, it's been for a long time, the, the season opener. I like it because it's a track that's... <sighs> the teams aren't really designing their car around it because it's kind of particular. Yeah. It's It happens... I don't, I don't, you know, and so far from from what F one's core is, which is Europe, and you know, they, they, you know, this this hemisphere mm-hmm. <laughs> at least, um, it it is right at the beginning, so nobody really knows much about their car, but it doesn't really matter because the teams are thinking of other tracks, yeah, not not the Australian Grand Prix track. So because of that, it it, it it's it's a race that, despite what happened last year, it usually does generate some mixed results and now we have the qualifying the new qualifying format is going to be actually happen for melbourne melbourne Melbourne. Melbourne. check this out though the past six australian grand prix Mm -hmm. have had different winners every single one so that's up in the air too because last year was lewis but people people i think a lot of people think that lewis has won has won in australia uh, two years in a row now but no who was it before it was uh rosberg rosberg yeah I don't remember though all six, but well, still, I know still with Mercedes though, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm assuming it's just gonna be some sort of top. <laughs> it's one a of huge the top pack. It's huge like, toss-up race though, because this year testing was shortened a right. week, a week less of testing than usual, and all new cars. There's two debut drivers doing their mm-hmm. first race. There's a new team who's never driven before. There's Toro Rosso with a new we, engine in the can car. We call, can we call Manor a new team-ish in a, in, 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 of sorts? In a way, yeah. I guess the, that, like Toro Rosso, they got a new engine, new te- new people but on the they team. Also, yeah, they, 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 new got, aero. they gutted all the team, even up to, up to top management mostly. The drivers. Uh, yeah, drivers are new. One of their drivers is debuting his first race. That's up in the air. Rio Harianto. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> uh, and also le- another fact less than half of the australian grand prix have been won from pole really it's, 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 a, it's a huge toss-up race last year was a big toss-up too because it happened later than usual mm. and australia is like on the southern hemisphere of the earth so they're going in into winter as we're coming into summer oh crazy so, like last year it was it was way colder than usually when they get there there was leaves blowing all over the track like all the leaves are falling off the trees cool already. This year's a lot earlier. So it's still kind of the end of the f- the end of their fall, I guess. Still, it's gonna be 22 degrees if you look at the weather forecast. It's supposed to rain. It looks like on uh, Friday, it's 80 percent chance of like an inch of rain. But uh, no rain, no rain for the race. No rain for the race. Sweet. Um. So is that is that like how the weather's looking? Yeah. So right. Can you imagine qualifying that crazy new qualifying system in the rain? <laughs> But just, you know what's funny? Uh, yeah. As you're saying that, um, you, your face lit up, right? And then, like, you're excited. <laughs> it's so right? good. You're, you're excited. Yeah. But, like, it seems to me, if, like, from all the news I sort of yeah. read, is that, like, everyone is just like, well, fuck this system. It's like, what was wrong with the old one? It, okay. Remember, because over the past uh, week we met um, and I, I showed Danny uh, this uh, this podcast and I, and I really recommend it. I've said it before, but go on the motorsport.com um, YouTube channel. They have a YouTube channel now, and they've been pumping out these like they they, they do this podcast mm-hmm. that goes on YouTube. Uh, and the latest one, they had uh, Pat Simmons from uh, he's a chief technical officer of the Williams team. Oh, so this shit. is a guy from the inside. Yeah, and the way he put it was was very clever, and it kind of resonated with my thinking. And is that it's surprising the amount of people that just aren't really getting uh, why why the qualifying system got changed. Mm. Because the qualifying system got changed not for the sake of qualifying, but for the sake of the, the race. race. Right. Yeah. Like that, it, it, people said one one needs fixing. The race and the racing needs fixing, mm-hmm. uh, or at least that's that, that's that's a perceived emotion in F one right now. But you know, let's not even get into whether that is true or not. But the perceived emotion and most people were saying yes the racing and the race uh needs uh, taking a look at mm-hmm. and a bunch of people that are in the sport and you know whether whether they know what they're doing or not like some you know we can spend all day talking about that but when they got together they figured listen the way to fix the race and the racing is by tampering with qualifying because mix this it up is, in quality yeah, yeah mm-hmm. this system it could 
and he said and Pat Simmons said not all the races but some he's like he's like for sure some because there's going to be mistakes there's going to be things yeah. that you can't control yeah. like traffic and whatever mm -hmm. that will come up and it will sometimes this year at some races will mix up the order and that is exciting to see yeah when when a driver has to battle through the fear what when, when drivers are out of position especially mm. top drivers out of position yeah something crazy because we talked about this and it's gone back and forth three different weeks in a row it's it's set now but we're talking about it again and i know we're going to talk about Ecclestone a little bit later but he yeah. said this week that he now that it's set he's not so sure that the new qualifying is the right way to go or that it's going to have any effect and he would have rather seen a uh, penalty time put on the race winner so that's his fifth or sixth different idea that he would have rather seen but he's like three or four days ago he, he said that but you know what he wants come on because what he wants penalty? is reverse grids yeah but it, the season like, is in, like, the, the season has started now like we can't. They can't change <laughs> change it again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, reverse grids. Well, what's this idea that uh, you qualify like you normally qualify up to now? Yeah. But then um, the top ten positions get like reverse. So like the tenth would start a half first. That's grid. Oh yeah, so that's a half. Some reverse. Some race series reverse the entire grid. Like you qualify last. What yeah. The fuck first. is the point of qualifying? That seems because, kind of ridiculous. Because the me, fastest be car then. Instead, you have to still fight in the race and make it more exciting. Yeah, but if it's but also like... It the argument be, in F1 yeah. is that it's too dangerous. Yeah. Well, it would be too difficult right... Well, right now, it's it would be... Um, if you do that, if you just do qualifying the way it was before and then reverse grid, then teams would want to qualify last, right? Like, they'll mm. be, like, just aiming everything to qualify right. last. So then you'd have to offer enough of an incentive, i.e. points for people to, to participate in the mess up qualifying yeah. but then if you do that like it would have to be worth like it would have to be enough of a compensation in points and for it to be realistic if they actually were to go ahead that's why they said the half reverse grid because right. maybe it yeah. wouldn't be realistic to offer you know whatever let's say like two points for qualifying mm -hmm. and then and then getting sent all the way back to 20 yeah. seconds yeah you would and but if you went back to 10 there yeah. is a high chance a high probability that like you could say you know what i can take him down i can go for the two points in qualifying for pole and uh for the top position in the race it's doable for a team like mercedes for example mm -hmm. yeah absolutely but but none of that's happening. No, of course none of that's happening. But I, I want, I just want to bring, um, like, uh, light to something else that Pat Simmons said, uh, especially regarding yeah. the, the the reverse grids. That if they actually went ahead, like, and he, and he he said, you know, I know he he was surrounded by motorsport journalists that obviously oppose the idea and like they think it's blasphemy. Uh, <laughs> but he said, I know that you guys don't like it, but if you think about it reverse grids could have the unintended consequence of forcing the the manufacturers and and all the teams to create a car that can be good at overtaking because right now what they're doing is that they're making and they're, they're, the whole program the way that they approach the sign of the car is making a car to go as fast as possible in clear air and that's why like there's that interface but if they actually change their philosophy by by being forced to do so to change their philosophy, yeah. they'd, they'd approach the entire design of the car different. They, they try to make a fast car that can overtake as well. Yeah, it's like the more they're trying to like suck the air to the car and shoot it up in the air for downforce, <laughs> the more you make turbulence behind you. And uh, it makes a lot of sense. And another thing that he said about the qualifying system that is happening, but we are going to see on Sunday, mm -hmm. is that this, if you qualify in second q2 you get to start the race on fresh tires if you move up to q3 and you call and you fight for the top eight positions you start the race on the tires that you finished q2 your best time in q2 on so I, there's wait I'm, guys we know this is complicated but stick, com stick with us I'm, yeah. I'm sure when you watch the race the like sky and nbc and ts they'll have their own graphical better explanations but basically if you're starting behind 8th place, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, yeah. you're starting on a brand new set of tires of whatever you want. If you're starting in 8th, 7th, 6th, 5th, 4th, 2nd, 3rd, 1st, yeah, yeah. you have to start in the tires that you destroyed trying to make it to Q3 and Q2. Oh, so wow. you keep those this, those tires that you put your fastest time mm -hmm. in the second qualifying, if you made it to the third, you start the race on. So there's 
a bit of an advantage possibly in finishing or qualifying ninth, tenth, or eleventh, as opposed to maybe eighth, seventh, or sixth, mm. because you get fr- that much longer of a first stint, that mm. much better of a get and go mm. off the off the start. And it's something that just got thrown out this week from from the FIA is that. There's been a, some sort of technical directive. I don't know if there, there's not really any details yet because it's so new. Sent so to te- all the teams. Technical directive. Some, some so this means Charlie Whiting. Yeah. Some sort of notice has been sent out that race starts will be done with only one clutch paddle. Only one clutch paddle will be allowed for starts. Oh, wow. I believe for the entire season starting they have effective the this week now. in Australia. Yeah. yeah. Right now they clutch, in, clutch into first and second gear. Mm. Now they'll only be able to do first, and then there's going to be a lot of spinning out and chaos, a little extra chaos in the start of the race. Again, that but see, something that nobody's practiced for the past yeah. <laughs> month that they've been testing. Yeah, but the next, uh, you know, by Spain, the, the teams will figure out a way to like make that automatic, like automatically happen in the gearbox. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps, <laughs> but there'll be it's a little a little added chaos. Oh, for sure. A little little mix up. The one thing Can't I wait. don't like. I mean, it's. I know what I know what he's trying to do. I know what Bernie's trying to do. Like I can kind of see through through the bullshit. But um, I don't like how we're, we're we're getting into a bit of a habit where the season opener, and I will talk a bit more about that. The the, the season opener is my, like it starts mired in controversy there's all kinds of side news remember the, last year with van der Gaard's thing like all that stuff that uh, uh, the, the 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 saubers you know between van der Gaard and sauber and then bernie like saying ridiculous outrageous stuff at the beginning of last year yeah it's Equal, a lot of news again, generating stuff yeah just but it, it does it have to be like bad negative news you know what i mean does it have to be all this mess we'll we'll touch a bit on that uh, a little later on because i know that come sunday we're going to be redeemed of this of all this bullshit with great racing it's gonna happen yeah. i mean let's take a let's take a look at what happened last year right like do you, i don't know if you remember but um the I, I went back and we titled the the episode for the australian grand prix the, the one that we did for, before the australian grand prix last year we tied uh, or the one that we did after sorry we titled it um, Australia's 11 because remember only 11 cars ended. <laughs> yeah, almost, yeah it's like half the grid didn't finish. Right. Almost half, nine cars didn't Do you remember finish. That? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was insane. Yeah, that was, and it was, bo- it was so boring like that. We had Daniel Ricciardo um, apologizing publicly to the, to the Australian fans for how boring the race was. <laughs> but it was because we had I all that. All so that, sorry. Yeah. It, okay, wait, hang on a second. Let me, let, let me pull it up because it was. Um, Cars didn't it didn't um, finish the race because of engine problems. There was a, w- a wheel collision, gearbox injury. All that happened. Oh, that was Valtteri Bottas. Well, yeah, Bottas. He sat out that race, right? Because he he, sa- yeah, he no, did yeah. that in like practice. Flew over the curb and yeah, crushed his back. But it was it was crazy. It was it was a crazy race uh, where not a lot happened. It it really set the the pace for the year in a bad way, right? Yeah, but we're not gonna have. I don't see that happening this year at all. I think I see all no. all the teams actually finishing or having the ability to finish the race. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Even McLaren. Even. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? That's a bold <laughs> statement, my friend. It, you know what? Maybe not McLaren, but I think I think the McLaren are are hiding their cards of as of what they can do with that engine. I think. Mm. Yeah. I think it makes sense for them. To bring a lot of the development, like this, this is something that some journalists have been saying, is that uh, McLaren is going to show up with further engine uh, bits. <laughs> this is like the version, bits. the third version of their engine, right? They brought two different engines to both tests. Yeah, and if they were just thrashing those engines just to try to find the limit yeah, of them, yeah. and then they show up um, to Melbourne with an engine that's over-engineered, for that, yeah. then it it could be an actual solid engine that it might not be the fastest, but it will get them through the race and maybe mm-hmm. even allow them to fight for a point or two, right right from the get go, right? And that would make sense to me because it's easier to bring parts from Japan to Australia than it is to Europe. So if they if yeah. they if they were timing some last minute fixes, it would be for the Australian Grand Prix. That would make sense. 
Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. You know what I mean? I don't know. I think I think that I think that the team in Japan is the Japanese people are proud people. They they're not gonna take their beating last year lightly. I don't think. <laughs> so something about uh, the weather. I forgot to mention. Yeah, excuse me, because we went over I guess twice already. The tire choices have been announced. What what each team has picked. Each dr- some of the teams have splits between their drivers on their tire choices. And everyone's looking to see how this 13 pre-chosen tires is going to work out. But I don't think we're going to get to see all that this weekend. If it's going to rain, all a lot, all or a lot of the tire rules and pre, pre-planned calculations that all the teams brought is out the window. Oh, yeah? But, yeah, we're not going to – if they're going to be on wet tires or intermediates – Maybe on Friday and Saturday. They're having tested those, you're right. They haven't really got a chance, <laughs> except for the X Wet test day yeah. that we talked about a couple X-wet. weeks ago. But only a, a handful of teams were invited to that. Yeah. After after Abu Dhabi, three or four teams were invited, and um, yeah, I guess it will. Uh, for me, anyways, it builds more excitement because going to the second race, you get to see really what the teams can do yeah. with it. With because you're not gonna, nothing's gonna be fully answered. If pe- everyone's on tires they haven't used, or if it, mm-hmm. if it rains, even if they have tested them, it always throws everything off. So, so we're gonna see what the teams can really do with their choices at Bahrain, perhaps. For for most like analysts out there, the the way that it looks is Ferrari and Mercedes at the top, right? Yeah. Uh, with a tight midfield that could or could not include Renault. Right. And then right at the bottom, uh, Manor. Sauber, McLaren, um, and uh, Haas, Haas, and possibly Renault fighting for those last uh, ten positions. Yeah, right. Yeah. If like if that's the case, though, like you said, like we Haas's goal, his Haas's goal was for a seventh place this year, didn't he say that? <laughs> Something like that, yeah. And he said that's a modest goal. <laughs> Well, but, then, but, then, but then he also <laughs> humbled down as soon as he got to Barcelona and, and said, listen, this is way more complicated yeah. <laughs> than we thought. If you want to talk about him for one second, yeah. he's, uh, he's challenged Richard Penske and another NASCAR dude, Hendrick, to join him in F1, first of all. And secondly, he's, he started saying in the past few days, uh, actually yesterday, their plan going forward and what they realize from testing is that they're going to actually have to take a lot of responsibility and power from ferrari because they said at testing he said ferrari has been in his uh in his words overly cautious about everything and that they don't put or allow them to put the engine on track if there's any anomaly in the in the analytics and data that in the telemetry that comes back <coughs> the the turbocharger thing that happened to them at testing was that was just a pro- like a physical problem with the turbo. Nothing okay. to do with how the car was running. Right. It's just a bad turbo. But as far as the telemetry said, one of the problems that kept them off track was they had a nick in one of the wires that I guess was causing some sort of interference. And it took them hours to find this wire. Wow. And he said, they were, at this point, he goes, of the, a quote, of course, we're relying heavily on Ferrari. The turbo was an unfortunate problem, but they are very cautious. And if they have a problem, they want to investigate it. And that Ferrari has control of the engine, but that's something that we, meaning Haas, has to decide on how we're going forward. It's our car, and Ferrari has a lot of responsibility to to provide technical assistance. But there's no reason we can't take some of those responsibilities on ourselves and make make sure the car we put out there actually works for their own. So I I guess he's... Like, we're, I bought this car. We're not being bullied. They're going to do what you guys say. <laughs> they probably got a lot of that at testing, right? Oh, the yeah. Ferrari's going to put as, take as much power as, from them as they can. If, but if, just one, one more thing for don't, testing, and, well, Just don't forget this quickly. Yeah. Haas is now providing a lot of CNC machines for Ferrari, For right? Ferrari, yeah. <laughs> yeah but He's got a little bit of control backwards. Here, here's what a lot of people, I mean, <laughs> and, and it's, it's got to be difficult, very difficult to imagine. Uh, how how this transpires in a real testing situation, but now because they have s- like such like so fewer days than they used to, right? Um, and there's so much telemetry, so many things that they have to analyze. The, the the engines have to be so reliable that apparently the way it goes is you have your team of hundreds of people, you know, or c- could amount to like you know. Hi- 
500 Mercedes people or whatever. Is yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and all of them, like so many of them, put in um, some time and research oh, and whatever, and, 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 and working on specific little bits of, of, of the engine or the car, whatever it is, or, or, or you know, the transmission, the way th things work under the hood. Um, and they're all telling the people that are out during the testing like every single every single minute like hey you need to you need to check for this or oh, you need to, to to run a simulation of this and they have to prioritize prioritize yeah. and if the people in Marinello uh were telling ferrari like you know we need you to check this hundred things in the next hour there it is not like it, it, it is not unreasonable to even think that then they turn around and like said like you know what has i need you to check this just 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 run this with the engine for a little bit to make their own workload a little better in a lot of ways it makes sense and not even sense like they kind of have to yeah. share data with ferrari because their data the is going to help sure. help yeah. ferrari yeah. build them a stronger engine yeah. but uh, on the other side like sauber is running a ferrari right yes Fer you, you, you know you ferrari too yeah, but you don't hear Monisha Kaltenborn in the news going, you know, this is, Ferrari's pushing us around. We're gonna, we're gonna make this work by ourselves, right? Monisha Just, kind of knows her place, though. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> now, Haas, this, this, I like this Haas guy already. I, I love this guy. He, I haven't even seen him race yet, but I love the few things that he's that he's said. He's actually haven't even seen him on TV yet. Be interviewed. Have you for F1? Yeah. Yeah. I, well, I mean, uh, well, like a, press a, releases a few, like from last year. Yeah, a few small things, but we haven't we haven't seen him like on the track. Like, how you doing today? And you know what I mean. Not yet. Not yet. But Not yet. Uh, from from this, and f I, I like what he, I like what he's saying, and, yeah. and challenging the two other big NASCAR du dudes in his position. Do you maybe think you guys should come, come check this out? Yeah, maybe. If he does well, right? Like, I guess if Penske we'll see was how saying. this U.S. Grand Prix goes this year. I think last year was a bit of an anomaly yeah. with the f monsoon hurricane hit texas but i don't know i like it me too maybe his seventh place isn't so i don't know he might he might also be uh poking a dragon or <laughs> pulling a tiger's tail or whatever poking the bear poking a bear yeah pulling Who? a tiger's tail that, that seems to be a, like a, like a common a monkey. things that, that that happens in f1 he, maybe he's just getting accl acclimated with the with the whole uh paddock life hashtag paddock life <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he that was what he's his first week he see the first week of testing he yeah. seemed maybe like he was gonna be a bit of a weaker character. He's like oh saying he's overwhelmed, this is crazier than I thought, these cars are really <laughs> complicated, holy shit. But now he seems a bit more like no, those we're, cars are really fast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They've also Haas has also s said yesterday twenty seventeen car is underway, they're working on it. So they can't be the only team, but as that, a new team they're going the 2017 not to change the subject but it seems like <laughs> is, F, is, is, F1, is f1 even gonna happen in 2017 that's a valid question i think that's a real question right now i meant the rule answers. change I meant the no, rule no, change. no 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 the kind of championship altogether is it actually <laughs> happening <laughs> they're just like bernie's like ah you know what just forget it let's take a year break boys yeah. <laughs> honestly i think if i had to choose out of all the teams for a this this weekend, which one I'm most excited to see what they're gonna do? It's Haas. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's, I think it's got to be Haas. Like Ferrari and Mercedes. That's given. We're gonna see that through the year. But this first year coming in, I want to see really what these guys have put together. Yeah. I could also see them falling face first on their. Absolutely. Ass. That's why I'm. Wait. That's why I'm most. This could be a whole bunch of bravado. There's, we're gonna fucking tell Ferrari what's good and <laughs> we're gonna drive this car as fast as it can go, whatever. But yeah, it might <laughs> he might have said this? Like he said, poke the tiger and they get flames shooting out the exhaust of both of them. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's gonna be exciting. <laughs> Come on, I, I, how exciting is 2016, uh, 2016 gonna be? Like, I've been saying this to everybody. The other day, my boss um, yeah. asked me. He was like. We were we were out having uh, beers, and and he was like, "Yo, like, so how, like, like, are you excited for this season?" And I was like, "Listen, bro, bro, <laughs> bro. <laughs> do you even listen to yeah, that?" Yeah. <laughs> God damn, I'm always excited. No, but but it's it's it has it has the right. It's like the stars are aligning for for quite the tempest, you know, yeah. the perfect storm. Uh, you know, to to use a cliche, an over an overused mm -hmm. cliche in the media. The perfect storm could happen, man. 
It could be. Especially Friday if it rains. Absolutely. I think <laughs> what you I'd wanna, like to see, oh. uh, just quickly, what I'd like to see yeah. from this season yeah, there's no rush. is um, I want to see like a smaller gap between the drivers. I, I don't want to see, like, obviously I want to see fast racing. Mm-hmm. That's, that's what yeah. it's about. Right? Absolutely. Yes. Right? Yes. It's all about the fever. Yeah. Uh, but I don't, like, I want this thing to be tight, like real tight. Can can Real I throw time. out some breaking news? Yes. But without without breaking it completely. I'll sa- excuse the pun. We'll save this for the second uh, segment of today's show. We'll be talking about the state of affairs in F1. But since he brought that up, a uh, little bit of foreshadow. Read the headline. Marco, uh, signs are that equality of F1 engines is to be enforced. Yeah. This came out last night. Oh, my so God. We'll talk about that in the second part of the yeah. show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We will. But uh, you might get your wish, man. 2017. <laughs> we'll Revolution. But look, you want to well, look at this I mean, track? The, the, okay, just real, real quick. Sorry, just yeah. just one, one more thing. Because 2017 rules, they were supposed to lock and load that at the, same te- at the same meeting that they came out with the new qualifying rules. But let me guess. It got delayed. Oh, they pushed right. it back over. Oh, one, my God. To, one month. To, almost, to almost April. And that is, that is really tight. Isn't it? I thought it was April 30th. Or, yeah, or sorry, the end of April. Yeah, yes, one, the they added one month, or 28 days or something. To the end of April, man. That is, like, that is messed up, man. That's that's not going to give the teams out. Like, They've been talking since Haas, November, March Haas 31st. Haas is already working on the, on the 2017 cars. That's, that's just what came out. But yeah. don't you believe that all the other teams are not working? They, they are. All of the teams are working on the 2017 car because yeah. they have to. Because, and Haas just has to say that they have to because they're oh, new. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They're say that they are. But, it seems... Sorry. By the time that that the end of April hits, and let's say they actually do agree on something on April thirtieth, mm-hmm. the first of May, it's gonna be too late. Like even that day, April thirtieth, is already too late for these teams to start designing a car. So it's gonna be like so. Twenty seventeen is gonna be crazy, if anything, because the engineers are gonna be giving given months, like w- months less than they used to have to design and produce a car. That puts. Hopefully, some pressure on simplified arrow rules, right? I hope so. God they, damn. they might, they might but unanimously look at each no, other and be like, "All right, man, but, let's." That, but they might not, because this is all about engineering, and we'll be like, "No, we can design the best wings in eleven months, no problem." Uh, anyway, it's both both ways. It's, it seems to me. Um, Find out. Maybe this is like illogical or something like that. It seems so, like a, a bad time for a team to get into F one for this year. It's stock. Uh, does that not seem kind unless, of ridiculous? unless he took the highest route, which is by an half their stuff was already built. Right, right. I see. Yeah. But I, also in this, I didn't go into all the details. But uh, as well, what has said is they plan as almost as quickly as possible, I guess, to pull a lot of the as many of the parts that they can control under their own belt as they can as quickly as they can. Right. Okay. So it was a good way for them to start, obviously, mm-hmm. and f- gave I'm hey. sure gave Ferrari a big boost up behind Mercedes. And hey, man, if you if you if what your deal teams. if what your deal is to make machines that make other machines, you might be on the right track. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, that was my next question. I yeah. guess obviously, like that's they, what he does. They, they have an insider track into sort of F1 to a certain degree, right? The, the reason that Gene Haas got into F1 is to sell CNC machines. Wow. Well, that's, he's, that's he's a ra- he, I think he obviously loves racing. He's been mm-hmm. racing for since the 80s mm-hmm. in NASCAR and shit, but the, this fa- that's his family history. But yeah. they they build all their own stuff, too. Yeah. Some yeah, of the, even like one the, of the biggest CNC The fact builders. that they came that they came that they're coming up with their own rims, that's something to be admired. For the only, sure. Yeah, the only team machining their own uh, magnesium the to prove the, the machines can work magnesium Wicked. or probably whatever. Right? Wicked. Awesome. Yeah. I I do wish them all the best. It doesn't seem like they're going to be out of the bottom end of the packs anytime soon. But that's that's the road to F1, man. And yeah. and for sure has the way that has did it was like taking like like a like a highway yeah. into f1 yeah. as opposed to what caterham and, and manor did like back in 2008 they basically like tried to climb k- the kilimanjaro <laughs> f1 mountain <laughs> by themselves no guide and don't forget there was a, some sort of complaint made by mercedes a few months ago that perhaps some rules were being breached between haas and, f- and ferrari mm-hmm. re- regarding the wind tunnel data that they were using and sharing mm-hmm. and that the fia sent an inspector to ensure that everything was on the up and up right. at the wind tunnel, right. 
who used to work for Ferrari. Oh, <laughs> Don't forget that. God. Don't forget that. He said everything all, was cool. They're all buddy buddies. Nobody's cheating over here yeah. where I used Coffee. to work. Yeah, nobody's cheating over here where I used over to work. <laughs> nah. <God>. What? what? <laughs> Those guys are top guys. No way. <laughs> top man. Yeah. Top man. Top man. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to the Australian Grand Prix, let's... let's, let's oh, yeah, yeah. Let's you know, you know I, I feel like we really have to take a minute here to think. We're going to think... <laughs> the formula one youtube channel for this because they're putting this stuff out there on youtube how progressive of them finally man finally (laughs) i know that they're doing maybe like one one hundredth of what they should be doing but uh, you know what if that's commendable let's 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 just hope they keep putting this stuff out there yeah that other video i had that we watched earlier with the uh, adelaide the historical lap that was also uh uh, official f1 they're doing some stuff if, if you check the official F1 channel, they have this morning the first ever, I believe, onboard video was used in Australia for the modern uh, onboard what, what, live Why don't we throw that a little, on a little later? But for now. Yeah. So Danny. Check it out. Uh, check it out. Check yeah, it out. yeah, quick play. Yeah. So here's the track. Obviously, we can't use the uh, the audio. No, no, no. Not that. No full screen. Sorry. My bad. You can go theater that. mode. Theater yeah, mode. That's what it was so this track's in Melbourne downtown melbourne this is actually like a sister track to the canadian grand prix because it's in uh the in city, city park, park. Yeah, S- surrounding, surrounding a lake <laughs> an <laughs> artificial <laughs> lake yeah there's a big park tennis court i don't think they have a casino no well it's not there at least there is a bit only a little bit of elevation change not a lot there's the first drs zone yeah, right close two drs zones on the this basically track. on the first part uh melbourne great city like look at that yeah beautiful Chicane, like fast chicanes and sort of smooth corners, big, big long corners. And like. it, it's it's got that uh, street circuit feel to it. Yeah, uh, the only real straight, I guess, is the the front straight. The other mm-hmm. straights are all they all have a bit of a curve in them. They're all you're turning a bit. Uh, to go back to all what we were talking about before, we have a question from uh, Luke. Uh, what do you guys think of uh, Force India are going to be able to do in the flyaways? I think it depends how many. Um, months VJ Malia can manage to keep uh, himself from getting arrested and <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is directly proportional to, uh, to 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 how far can VJ Malia run like yeah. his his long distance running like it's directly proportional to that <laughs> <laughs> how long he can keep his extradition process down I don't know he's gonna get uh, sent to India it looks like it could be man I don't know like he's he's, a, he's in a big mess man he's he's we'll talk about him a little later on just to not stray too far away from from the australian grand prix like so to stay tuned but what what's happening is that the news is tightening around his neck at this point and to, oh sorry 
Well, he, he, he keeps running away from, from this problem. And obviously, like, this is only going to develop further and further in the year as the trials keep going, as he keeps, wa as he, as he keeps wasting money from the public purse. Because you got to think that all these prosecutors, everything, it's you're wasting Indian taxpayers' money on this. And to make an example of him, because I think that the mentality right now is changing in India, where whereas um, it used to be a country that was basically open for rampant corruption, mm. um, things are slowly starting, the system is slowly starting to change into accountability because they basically realize that we either, we either start crucifying some people or the country is going to go out of control in, this, in a spiral <laughs> of debt. So what's going to... Yeah. <laughs> it's so they, they, they got to do it if anything just for their own survival and i think that these judges are looking to make an example out of vj malia and if they get a hold if he if vj malia so much as puts like puts like like his toe in on indian <laughs> soil he's booked he's gonna get booked he's not gonna be able to go on into a possible indian he's, grand prix if they ever do it again it's weird he's believed to be in england but you would assume that they would have some sort of treaty with india that they should arrest him and send him back and vice versa, right? If somebody, if a British guy owed 1.3 billion and was in India, wouldn't they expect him to be arrested and sent back both ways? Hmm? Wouldn't India be expecting England to send him back? The only he's suspected to be hiding out in London. Or yeah. he's not hiding. He has yeah, not, yeah, he's listen, not run away. Listen, dude. <laughs> let's, let's not get into, <laughs> into, into British and English like politics and the way that the cookie crumbles over there but basically if you're in the you city the biscuit? Of, if you, yeah, yeah, the, yeah the way the biscuit crumbles eh? <laughs> so but the, if, if you the deal is that in the city of london which is not the municipal i'm not talking about the municipality of london i'm talking about the city of london mm. and it's an independent thing the little square the yeah that, the square mile if you're in the city of london and you have enough money you can get away with anything you want mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we were talking about last like the forbidden city in china saying <laughs> like they have their own version yeah <laughs> but r anyways racing wise hulkenberg and checo are both i think they both have the mindset that they're ready to kick ass and get everything they can yo, out of that hang on year. this guy this guy on the on, on the chat this uh, this luke guy yo uh what's up luke he's been going to the grand prix at, in melbourne uh since 2005 Oh, wicked! Yeah, oh, that's like, fantastic. Yo, Luke, what's uh, you, you know? Tell us right now in the chat whenever you're whenever you hear this, uh, like what's your first, like what's your favorite uh, memory from from the Grand Prix? Like, is it is it sick to go? Like, how is how is GA? Like, if you were to go to like on GA tickets, can you can you walk around? That's kind that kind of stuff. Anyway, yeah, we 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 expect to hear from you, Luke. <laughs> <laughs> um, <Yeah>. no, <laughs> sorry, go ahead. <laughs> sorry. sorry. <laughs> stumble the yeah. race um in melbourne has let me put it to you the another way and the australian grand prix has not always been in melbourne it, yeah right before melbourne and a lot of uh, older f1 folk remember very fondly the grand prix in adelaide because that's that's where it was and they briefly tried to take their grand prix back if you remember, like, during the off-season. This past year, yeah, there were, <clears throat> there was some sort of a vote between the cities or something. Yeah. Yeah, that's the guy. And we, we really wanted to, like, bring a highlight to this because it's... It, the thing with Adelaide is that they kind of blocked off parts of the city as well. So it was, it was like, a... It was one of the very first uh, Grand Prix that was, like, conducted, like, through, like, city streets, like, off, like, a... Off, like, a, off a major city, right? Yeah. Um, and... and, and this is this this video is from the official f1 but i'm not 100 percent on this fact but i saw it in the comments that this was one of the first oh there it is that's actually from the i got it from there that was a comment with first races of uh, modern style onboard camera was used so a lot of, i think the, a lot of the really old videos you see of like senna and stuff yeah they were cameras that weren't sending like a radio signal video that they could watch live they're just kind of recording and then later they watch the video oh shit this was you could actually watch you could actually the first time you could actually see inside a car live on tv wow that's pretty cool the, the, so uh for our this 1986 30 years ago man jeez for for our audio listeners uh check this out this is on the formula one official we can, we can play channel. the audio of this i believe yeah no? yeah because yeah. it's got no commentary just like keep it a little lower yeah 
Uh, it's yeah, just the sound of these cars, man. No power steering. The guy's taking his hand off the off the wheel. I watched this already. The start of this race was badass too. John Dumfries. Never heard of him. <laughs> Johnny Dumfries, actually. He was he was a very popular uh, figure in the F1 paddock back in the... Look at that! 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 was a Ferrari! <laughs> <laughs> I was inside a womb when this happened. Um, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Man, it's crazy. Uh, you mentioned this before when, when we watched it, but like you could see them. They're wrestling. Like, oh, 100%, yeah, yeah. man. They are working for this. Yeah, these people, okay, F1 drivers right now have to exercise a lot of their... Give us one or two more ticks ...their neck volume, muscles. Man. to hear this. But back back in the day was yeah. neck and arms. Like, these guys, just their whole upper body <laughs> had to be, like... A triangle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that's wow. why you see, like, the typical, like, Nigel Mansell kind of shape. Like, Senna was also like, kind of like that. You know, because like, they had to be. To, to wrestle these cars into submission. If Some random know. rain. Yeah. <laughs> So much torque because you can hear him like, like putting the engine up and down without shifting. They're also like they shift old school shifting times, with their actual hand and a clutch. Yeah, the, the amount how heavy that clutch pedal is. Oh my god, it's gotta be the heaviest clutch ever. You're wrong. You were actually alive, and so was I by the time that this happened oh, because yeah? the Australian Grand Prix back then oh, this was the, the last opening. race, wow. 26 October. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm still shitting my pants though. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Probably didn't, couldn't oh, even say As a daily routine. So this guy, let me tell you about uh, <laughs> actually the flames shooting in his face from the car in front. Right now, like <laughs> just uh, to, to go back to Johnny Dumfries, the guy that's actually doing this this onboard right now. He actually was a really cool chap, very very well liked uh, around the paddock. He was just like kind of a cool guy. But um, let me okay. So his name is actually John Colum Christian Stewart. Seventh Marquis of Butte. He was a uh, he was a noble. He was, <laughs> noble he, was he had some sort what? of a, yeah cool. some sort of a title. <laughs> yeah, his his, his title. In, in the, he's the Earl of Dumfries. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> he was the Earl of Dumfries. Uh, really cool guy though. Apparently, he just you know despite being obviously this was back when F one was still towards the, the butt end of when when it was still like just for playboys and, and right you know. <laughs> um, but he was he was just like a. A truly, truly nice guy. A lot of people in the in the in the history of F one, especially around this time, really, really remember him fondly as as being a, a a very very happy person, a very 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 amenable person up and down the paddock. He didn't like to be called uh, Earl of Dumfries, <laughs> so <laughs> that's why he when he entered, he was he was he just called he was he, he would be like just call me Johnny, just call me Johnny, Johnny Dumfries. <laughs> cool guy, cool guy, and and fast too, as you saw mm. there. <laughs> Uh, so Luke got back to us. Uh, he says, so guys, bit of uh, info on the general admission. It's uh, really pretty free. Uh, my favorite place to go is the Grass Banks near turn 8 and 9. You'll see plenty of people there on race day. Very Sick. cool. <clears throat> That's good, what... Good to know. The the track in Montreal is missing is hill areas. There's one by the hairpin. Mm -hmm. We've sat there a lot of times, but... <laughs> you need to oh, yeah. Just basically put, Our pseudo put bench. a couple of piles of dirt there. <laughs> That's it. That's all I'm asking. Pile some dirt they, for us to sit on. What was the what was the bench called that we made or half made? Oh, the Trey Grand Prix. The Trey Grand Prix. The Trey Grand Stand. <laughs> oh, the Trey Grand Stand. <laughs> well, we had a we had a different name for it, I think, at the time. Which a was piece of shit, motherfucking <laughs> heavy the shit. The Petit Grand Stand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you couldn't yeah. hold that shit. That was so heavy. It was. 80 pounds. It was. No, at, there's at something I want to get was, for it us. It was at the same time our finest and our worst moment. That thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was ambitious, but rubbish. Like, oh, in, my in, God. in the Top Gear style. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, man. Um, <laughs> I got something for us next year. What? Uh, this year. Yes. Uh, I saw it online. I'm not, I think it's like one of these GoFundMe or Kickstarter sort of things. Wicked. So I'm not sure if it exists. Yeah. But essentially, it's just um, not inflatable. You might have seen it on Reddit or online. <laughs> but it's like, it's kind of like, okay, I'm going to try to visualize it for you guys. So imagine. Um, like uh kind of like a sleeping bag yeah. right like a square sleeping bag that's probably the length of this room so i'd say like eight or nine feet something like that and what you do is you open it up it's like this tube and you pull in a bunch of air into okay it, and then you wrap I it accordion up. styles yeah, yeah, yeah so you so now it's like this yeah. like tube and okay now <laughs> what you do is you 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 bring it together at the ends and then now you can sit on it and this thing rolls into like a newspaper size oh like wow. a roll of newspaper nice. and it's like super comfy you can sit on it like 
horizontally or lengthwise, so you can like sit into it and just like do one of these. Oh yeah, like or beanbag chair without the beans. Without kinda. the beans, yeah. Just air. Yeah. <laughs> nice air beans. Let's do it. Let's beans check it out. Has a lot of air to move around too. Yeah. Interesting. Oh, Luke says, uh, any more questions, guys? I've probably explored every inch of that racetrack. (laughs) (laughs) We'll we'll think of something good, Luke. Um, If you're going to that race, bring a lot of money. uh, Because here's some official Red Bull shirts for sale. 350 Australian dollars. Pull that up. uh, I think you get the link there. The, they're basically like the the shirts you see the Red Bull guys wearing in the in the paddock. I'm sure other teams' shit is just as expensive. The shirt version, like the sweater version, is two seventy, and like the hooded, the hooded plastic jacket version is three hundred fifty Australian dollars. Yeah, thanks to whoever on Reddit for posting this. So I think we should, <laughs> you know. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. Like the other teams' stuff is equally That's as insane. expensive. They well, do I mean, look cool though. They they sell a lot of Red Bull stuff in Australia because Poop. Danny Danny Rick. <laughs> Is it Australian? Puma <laughs> yeah. quality. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah, It's got the Puma on it. Oh, wow. That's insane. And, and the tag, see the tag shoulder patch? With the oh. left side shirt, right shoulder. Left shoulder. Tag Hoya. There you go. Oh, look at that. Tag yeah. patch. Right, right there. The tag, the tag Hoya engines, quote unquote. <laughs> um, let, let's pull up just real quick as well, like the, the, um, the, t- the tire pickings. Uh, the tire choices that Pirelli is going to bring for us uh, for Australia for all the for all the drivers because I think I, I think we we went through this before but let's just go yeah. over it a little bit again. This is what I'm saying. It's going to get. We're not going to, wow. and I think it's a good thing. We're not going to really get to see these tire choices play out like the teams thought they would if it rains. Right. Absolutely. And Which actually, we we've been talking about this a lot. I don't think well. I've ever read or seen, or we've ever said or found out. What are the rules like if it does rain? What is the for what the for the qualifying? For qualifying, for practice, for the race? Oh, you if, keep these, no, or do you no, have if, to ex- do you have to trade one set of wets you qu- for each of these? If you, you qualify on on racing or sorry yeah, on, on wet tires, it's you you get free choice. I know that, but okay, so, so say like uh, so you practice, you have thirteen sets. You go for yeah. FP one and it's raining, mm-hmm. so you use some intermediate and wet tires to go out right, mm-hmm. and you come back in. Are you still going to have 13 more sets of dry tires or do you have to choose two of those that you would have used and give them back? No, 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 no. It gives you, you still more. still get 13 more yeah, sets. Yeah, that's the thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it's not going to play out, but it might be even more crazy. Yeah. You can yeah. do like four super soft Except sets. Everybody, everybody's going to be race. on. Yeah, everybody's going to be on fresh tires. If the that's teams the case. that picked six and seven yeah. super softs, you can just go on like a four stint you, you power have, race. But you have to throw in at least one other uh, tire, right? And we don't, we don't have see on this chart. Pirelli has the mandatory sets that you must use yeah. and give one back. Oh my god, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what happens. This this stuff. There's I mean, a, to anybody like that's worried, it's to, like a Yahtzee, five dice at once. But listen, F one makes absolutely <laughs> no illusions about being simple. And Mike, you through your own journey of getting into F one, yep. <laughs> it took you a little bit to, to to get a hold of things. I'm sure. Like it does anybody? <laughs> Fucking still, man. <laughs> because it's it's a bit of a of, of a steep learning curve, and yeah. maybe maybe something should be done to address some of that. But the reality of the sport is that it is a complicated sport, mm-hmm. at least to begin with. But it's only like it's only complicated in the same way that Catan, Settlers of Catan, if if you're familiar with that, yeah. can be a complicated game to explain to somebody that's never played yeah but once you get you just, it yeah you just or you just like go like you know what just sit down let's play around yeah. same with this i'm sure that yeah, no matter how complicated race. these ra- these these tire rules yeah. are by the second or third race we're gonna have it down pat it's gonna be second nature yeah exactly yeah yeah absolutely you and know the one thing that bothers me about this infograph yeah is this fucking this this compared that to helmet. these three yeah <laughs> Make it the same fucking size. Like, come on, man. <laughs> like, I don't know. It really fucking bothers me. Sorry. Um, this wait. this graphic is, you can find it on the internet. It's called Formula One Rolex Australian Grand Prix Melbourne Selected Sets Per Driver. Pirelli put it's it out. official Pirelli stuff, so yeah, it's easy to find. Um, Pirelli did, and just now that we're talking about, about rules, let's just put this on in the background. Because um, Pirelli, you, you know how like we said that 
you know, all these tire rules, like whatever, like they nobody's actually addressing like whether or not uh, Pirelli actually put out. <laughs> I guess they they started he they kill the sound. Uh, they started hearing people complaining about this, and they like put out like their own little video, and it's you know it's pretty cool. It tries to be like all. You know, isometric drawings and whatever. Um, you know, it reminds me of Portal, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Portal, the video game. It's very, very much like that. Very yeah, cute. It's, it's a one minute and 20 seconds, and it just kind of, like, shows you <laughs> the tires that. getting That's in the adorable. truck. And, um, it, beep, boop, beep, so it boop. tells you, like, the thing, that in, in just, like, kind of, like, point format, how many uh, uh, dries uh, go per race, how many uh, wet, uh, his wet set of tires, um, how the teams, like, you know, even like down to like th this barcode that the FIA puts on it. It's a pretty cool little info, <laughs> um, cool little video. Um, but there you go. So then they talk about the two mandatory ones. See, so that thing with the softest period one, so one extra uh, set of soft tires the for the Q for Q three. That's still a thing. That's still happening. That you must use, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Each driver drives with a different set of tires. That can be that can happen, and you, they can use at least they, they have to use at least two dry weather set of compounds, unless it rains. Unless it rains, right? Yeah. Is there like uh, like some sort of um, notation or rule? It's just like this qualifies as rain. Like if it like spittles for like a few seconds, like is that rain? It's it's a, if you put the wet tires on. So I I, I think it if would, it's wet enough. To require the wet tires. <coughs> oh, See, okay. I think it probably would be legal for a team to put on a set of intermediates, go for a lap, and then not have to use both sets of dry tires, but it just wouldn't make sense. There is it just wouldn't in in time time wise at the end you could you wouldn't it, teams would be doing that if it was beneficial. Because yeah. those wet tires just if there's no water on the track, they burn up. So they need that water to yeah. keep them cool. They run a lot cooler. They're a lot softer, and the gro yeah. the grooves in them tear up. Absolutely, so yeah, yeah. Little little edges to get torn up. If there was a big, big, big gray area, like you know, if you know, to, to to go further into into your question, mm -hmm. if there was like an actual situation where really it was sort of in between wet and dry, and teams like like some teams are going out like an on, X on wet dry situation. Tires, an X wet situation. Or even 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 more gray area than that. <laughs> yeah. Then it's up to Charlie Whiting. It's up to race control. Race control. Oh, really? Like a guy like steps out of his booth and goes like, "Yep, it's raining." <laughs> <laughs> Beep. But there, there's no one to say that you have to put on wet tires now, no, or but you have to put on dry tires now. Right. If you want to put on the but dry tires when it's raining and risk for this going off into the grass for the sake of enforcing the rules, yeah. Then, then yeah. it would be up to Charlie Whiting to say, Got it. "This is what." <clears throat> yeah. 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 Uh, Luke says, "I think something that a lot of people uh, are, are wishing. I wished FOM uploaded races in full HD." Wow. <laughs> I'm not he, sure if you've been listening to our podcast for a while, but <laughs> this is our MO. <laughs> so do we, man. Man, this is every single Which F1 is. fan, like 30 and under or like around. Anybody that lives in this century, as opposed to stuck in the 70s, like, like, right. like Barry Ecclestone, this is the only thing that makes sense. Yeah. And actually, that's on our list to talk about today in the next segment. Yeah. Because I think we've been talking about it for a whole year now. And... uh it's finally coming into the light that that yeah that situation. It's because of, because of other sports. It's leading the way. It's it's gonna have to F1's happen. Trailing the way in that respect, but absolutely, absolutely. Um, it's any any closing notes of oh actually I just I I wanted to go back to this and because I think this is very important. It's so good, Mike, Danny, in your own words, <laughs> like what that we haven't said so far. Are you excited about for either Australia or 2016 in general? I'm just excited for it to start again because we we we've been talking for so long, like even in the off season, without a race actually happening. <laughs> and like I love when we go back and you guys tell me all the things that we miss or I missed uh, during during the races, and I get a, a better explanation of it. Uh, that's that that's what I'm really looking forward to, and then helping people sort of. Uh, with the podcast and they can enjoy it a bit more get a get a good old rundown as it were yeah, yeah for australia man it's a, just a mix of everything it's like we like we said the two teams switching engines last minute haas coming in new team two brand new drivers making their debuts 
uh, I don't know, there's so much, man. The, the new tires, the new qualifying, how that's going to affect the race. It's going to rain. So we're going to have two kind of two races. The first two races are going to kind of, because it's obviously not going to rain in Bahrain, even though they got rain in the name of their country. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't rain there too much. But we're going to, I think it's going to be good to see over two races how the tire thing pans out, how they work on the track. There's a lot, man. There's a lot. I think the the new uh, radio ban is going to have a huge effect. And I really, really, I th- maybe one of the biggest, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, is I hope that they're as serious as they've said they are about enforcing the track limits rule. That's going to be great. I really, because that, it bugs me, man. Like, it's, it's so, la- like, on and off with that. It goes both ways. Like, sometimes you get a pole lap and the car went off. That doesn't count, man. That doesn't count. And it's counted sometimes. Uh, on it. on top of like seeing how the new qualifying actually will pan out. Oh man, uh, that's gonna be exciting. Yeah, um, I, I want I want to see drivers really upset. Oh yeah, <laughs> I just yeah. want to see Lewis Hamilton yeah. lose his Pe- mind. People complain that oh, there's not enough. Uh, like th- th- there aren't a lot of characters in F1. Like they, you know, the, these drivers they're 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 monotone. It's maybe be- perhaps because they haven't been poked enough, they yeah, haven't been like yeah, pissed yeah. off enough. <laughs> yeah, let's let's throw some coals in the fire. Let's let's mess things up a bit. Um, let's come back and talk about that. Though. Yeah, I'm That's I'm also cool. like will uh, really excited just on a pure like fanhood point of view. Pe- like really excited to see if anything, um, how Ferrari are gonna stack up mm. against Mercedes because yeah. I think that. If everything goes their way, the Ferrari could like bring it back. Like, really bring it back, and just the close fighting that's going to happen in the midfield mm-hmm. has me very intrigued. I think I don't know what I mean. I, I, I don't want to like jump in this like <laughs> teenager Max Verstappen fan theory, <laughs> but him with a 2015 Ferrari engine is it's probable that like that's he could even thought. that he could even finish the race. I think he's Higher really good, man. Than than Ricciardo on home soil. So that battle between Ricciardo and and Verstappen, I think, is gonna be one to watch this weekend. Max, man, there, uh, <clears throat> there's a video. I don't know how old it is, but I just my last point here <laughs> of him driving his dad in a race car around Spa, and it looks like uh, his dad's about to shit his pants. Like it's not an F1 car; it's a two seater. But uh, yeah, well, let's come back and talk about the state of affairs in uh, F1 right now, All right. in a broad sense. We'll be back, guys. All right. this, getting into this weekend, though, and, and I really wish it wasn't like this, but Ecclestone insists in making it all about the controversy before uh, getting into the season opener somehow. Um, but we're talking about a few different things happening in the world of F1 um, that have been making the press rounds. One, this, this Sauber not paying their employees. Now, this started, this broke last week or something, or it was, you know, rumor on the paddock. So, teams that were in this position uh, in recent F1 history, where they where they didn't pay their, their team, have been the likes of um, Manor, Lotus, uh, Lotus, um, Lotus, Lotus couldn't afford K- lunch last year. Yeah, K- Caterham, oh my God. right? Caterham aren't even a team anymore. Yeah, so two, two of two out of those teams made it to to modern F one, but the one was basically like dangling by a thread, almost about to collapse with but Manor. There was like, <clears throat> excuse, excuse me, but yeah, there was like riots there. No, those out of the HRT type of. The whole transition type thing. Remember, there was like riots there. They didn't get paid at the end. HRT, no, HRT wasn't Manor. Manor was Virgin Racing. Oh, right. Well, yeah. I, sorry. Anyway, that was a s- s- separate, yeah. the same thing. Though. But yeah, they had riots. They oh, were, yeah. HRT, stopped, obviously, yeah. Stop paying their employees. Money. Yeah. It's it basically like teams that start on that track of not paying their employees soon after, by the end of the season, uh, they're faced with a decision of either lay everybody off. And and try to continue the team somehow, grasping for air, not you showing up next year with a with a with a working car. You can't win anymore. Yeah. Because if I'm at work and my boss says, you know what, man, stuff's really tight, but we need you guys. If if everyone here works, 
a little harder, extra hard, will be able to afford to pay you. And be like, kiss my ass, man. I'm going to stand around till I get my check. Yeah. And in a week or so, I'm going to give up and you can go fuck yourself. <laughs> and that's what happens. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 100%. And then the team is gone because they can't build parts because they haven't paid anybody and then they're not going to work for free and et cetera. It's, it's a spiral. Hey, is our uh, fantasy stuff on the website? Yes. Okay. Uh, under uh, Reach Us. But okay. it's, it's, it's not updated. It's not updated to this okay. year's stuff. Yeah, we'll have that. We'll get that done this week, though. Yeah, get yeah, our yeah. leagues leagues set up. I'm actually excited. I gotta stick stick to it this year. Yeah. Some fantasy. And, and you know, I guess this is not new from, from Sauber because remember last year we started again with a controversy with Sauber. But yeah, they're all getting the, sued twice. All the repercussions, and I mean, we we might see the end of Sauber. Like for just from from this science, we might see the end of Sauber uh, by the end of, of of 2016. And I think it would be a quite a loss for f1 because we need more teams that are not based in the uk that is i believe that wholeheartedly um <clears throat> mr Pensky. yeah uh what else is happening this whole mess with vj malia man and like it, it's it abounds in business news and and just regular newspapers right now but vj malia he's like we said the news is tightening now like what what, what was the news that came from hyderabad uh, he is wanted on a non-bailable warrant. Okay, he's he ex missed. Explain what that means. We sort of mentioned this last week, but we didn't get get into it. But basically, there was first news that he had fled the country. Mm -hmm. He would fled India for for Britain, and then there was news from his camp or with his people that he's not fled. He went there to spend some time with his family. He's getting older, and that he had being paid out by the liquor company that he was the chairman of but well the uh, the article was written to the effect that he had been paid to leave basically like they couldn't get him out of the chairmanship without giving him a huge sum of money 75 million US dollars something like that to run so he had left he he left in India how fast was, was supposed can to you be run for 75 mil <laughs> <laughs> He was, I believe it was March 10th, was supposed to appear in court, did not. He missed his court date. And then immediately afterwards, a non-bailable warrant was issued for his arrest because he fled the country. And there, if you go deep into it, like the government had assured that these papers and the notices that he was supposed to be in court, et cetera, was sent to his personal email, not to any company emails or anything. So it's very unlikely that he could get away with saying, oh, I didn't get the message. I didn't know about I was wanted in court, et cetera, et cetera. He knows mm -hmm. what he did. He owes $1.3 billion in debt to various but Indian banks. He's getting booked, for uh, for example, for this one, is for a check that he that bounced for 75 grand. So this is, this is $1.5 billion. But you know, total split them on like little payments here and there. Can there are imagine, eleven like, separate much, lawsuits for eight million. How much? How much do you have <clears> to like? That must have taken some work, you know. Like it might have required like probably all of his waking time to figure out ways how to spend this one point four billion that he wasn't gonna pay back. One point three, one point three, nine, oh, yeah. ninety billion rupees in uh, <laughs> if you're Indian in your, in your currency. He's he's in big trouble. And uh, I don't, I don't know what he's gonna do. Mm -hmm. Keep looks running. Like looks like he's in big trouble. Jesus Christ. He's also, if you didn't know, a member of India's upper parliament. So what are they gonna do without a member of the Senate? I guess they, 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 they only need quorum. I guess to, 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 to pass any major legis legislation. But come on, like you can't be like. <laughs> how is that even a thing? See, no normally, when you're wanted for some sort of debt, you can. You can, if you didn't know, you missed your court date, something like that. You needed an extra day. You couldn't get there. You can turn yourself in and say, like, you know, I know I'm guilty or I have a defense mm -hmm. that I'm preparing either way. <coughs> and you'll be granted bail. Right. Usually, if uh, if you don't, you've never been to jail before, you're not a risk, a flight risk, uh, they'd call it. Like, if you don't have family, like his family is in England where he is, yeah. I guess. Like, if you, so... There is a high chance, almost 100%, that he's not <laughs> going to... He would jump bail, basically, and never come back to India. Bye. So he's got a non-bailable warrant. He's going to jail. 
He's he's yeah he's he, he's done. But now the question is, how does this affect his F1 team? Because now we have United Spirits, which was his company that owned this the you know King or no not Kingfisher but whatever the fuck the, his his booze brands. There's a lot of yeah booze brands that you you've drank. <laughs> yeah, we are, we don't need <laughs> well no no no. If you're Indian, you dr- you've drank him. But now, but a um, lot of them run by them are international brands. Rush, there's a couple of Russian and European brands. It doesn't matter yeah, what, what brands. Yeah, what, a what, lot of big brands though. Kingfisher Airlines is defunct. Five other of the CEO top level guys from that company are also wanted on non billable warrants, but. So this this drinks company that was buying that the, the, the wanted to buy him out, yep. right? Yep. Uh, it's one of the biggest drink co- drinks companies in the world. Um, they they're the ones that basically gave him that money to fuck off, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, now they the, the the whole thing is that they want they're they're after Sahara's the you know Roy Sahara his uh, uh, his partner VJ's partner they want Who's his shares sitting in jail right now of the f1 team and they eventually are probably going to want in in uh, for guaranteeing this loan that uh, uh the vj malia took out or you know vj malia's watson company took out um they're probably going to want um his shares of the formula one team as well maybe yeah control of the whole team yeah just so if that happens we're going to see a different player in formula one that's going to be out outside of you know the car manufacturing uh, outside of things like uh, um, Haas that brings like you know high industry goods, uh, outside of you know high VJ's level flamboyance. Yeah, no, that's a lot of what drives the team. Yeah, but right? we're gonna we're gonna see a brand that, and that, that could be very heavily involved in Formula One, <laughs> that their direct stake is consumer goods like straight retail. Booze is something that you know like just. They're they're actually gonna want to appeal not to the one percent, but to everyone, to everybody. Yeah. So that could be that could change a little bit, if anything, with uh, you know, the the image that they're gonna put out and the image and their budget. Yeah, their, their budget, budget could possibly increase yeah. if they're the guarantee on their debt is controlled by them, and it's the success of a of a successful race team they're if up, VJ, they're one of the bigger teams they're one if of the best VJ teams. Malia right now and like we we can probably only assume that he's if anything with that fucking rat there uh, <laughs> a survivor he is going to if push he's comes to cool shove he's a cool man he's funny yeah but if push comes to shove he will sell his Formula 1 team basically right he will yeah he will to. he will he, yeah he'll have to to survive if he if it comes to, and he will sell it for probably cheap you know, or, or not, or he won't ask as much as he could if, if he's in a bind. Force India right now could be the best value Formula One team that anybody can buy if you can, because they're they're doing great. They have a great, they have two excellent drivers. Wicked drivers, yeah. Platinum licensed, one of them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and the other one is Mexican, which just the that's gonna yeah. F one popularity is exploded in the past oh year though they had a lot of success they had just released a number that city of mexico alone profited in the hundreds of millions i don't know the number but a fuck they made a lot of money from tourism and hang on a second hotels taxes no, 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 no. hang on a second hang on a second because what they <laughs> but checo anyway checo what, checo's what, got a lot of push what, now what they say no no, no just sorry as, as, as a tangent to that tangent yeah uh <laughs> this is uh uh, from uh, Joe Sayward's blog, F1 journalist extraordinaire jo- Joe Sayward's blog <laughs> uh, is that uh, a-, a number came out in the, in the Mexican press that uh, the Formula One, the 2015 Formula One Mexican Grand Prix, generated an economic impact of 753.3 million. Whoa! See, I, I, Whoa. I, I saw it in the hundreds. I didn't, I didn't Great realize. Great pause, by the way. Impact that doesn't mean Hold profit on. to them. It's total bullshit. Yeah, that's, that can't <laughs> be real. It's total bullshit. Uh, Joe Sayward looked into it, and the the research firm that um, uh, that published this number was basically paid out. <laughs> By yeah, like what? Can, the city <laughs> really they they make a lot of money. Airport taxes, like yeah, on the planes, and, and you know, a peop- Ubers that people are going to be taking because there's Uber in Mexico, taxis, but hotel taxes. It's not. It's not. <laughs> 
It's not three quarters of a billion <laughs> dollars. Rest- <laughs> restaurant traffic. It's not. It's no. not. Come on. No. F1 doesn't generate that much money, especially because of how much money you have to put in. Like and they, had to, they, they had to spend the track. so much money. To they f- built a this, track. This is not net profits, not by any means whatsoever. No. It, 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 this, this, these numbers are like somebody was like and now for my next trick poof seven <laughs> 750 million out of a sudden and th- this obviously was uh was uh published on forbes magazine which we know that the f1 what? the f1 correspondent for forbes is bernie's lackey yeah the, all those articles are contri- contributions you would think that you would What's think that a magazine like forbes that's ranking billionaires out there will at least know what they what they're doing when they're publishing articles about money but nope. i guess <laughs> yeah and st- sticking with money and sponsorship what's this you wanted to talk about uh johnny walker and mclaren yes so um another thing that happened recently was that uh, johnny walker was considering well they, they basically announced but it, remember at the end of last year when we were talking about mclaren and like sp- sponsors fleeing and whatever and like getting out like the one the last thing that we saw was remember in this episode when we drank this oh, bubbly yeah. chandon when they got yeah when they got the chandon uh Sh- chandon whatever um when they got that money from the lvmh group mm-hmm. um basically diverted they they lost tag Hoya, but they gained chandon uh, so ba- really, in in high accounting, just it was just a, a number moved from one column to the other. But they lost almost like within a month of that being announced, they announced the loss of Johnny Walker. Now Johnny Walker is a Diageo brand, Diageo, the biggest drinks company in the world. Um, <clears throat> they uh, so they were gonna pull out of uh mclaren and go somewhere else or there was even another play that was supposed to happen like you know kind of under wraps where uh johnny walker daijo was gonna take their money and actually funnel it into another team i.e force india or whatever and and make that um like a and get together with aston martin and bring the Aston Martin brand, but like associated with uh, Diageo and all that. So, this movement, this this eating up of your previous words, <laughs> basically means um, that that is no longer a thing. So instead of you know just having their their the money that's been allocated already for F1 advertising and branding, they're just gonna give it back to McLaren, but basically what we see right now is that Diageo's play of maybe wanting to bring back the Aston brand back into F1 uh, is floundering or has absolutely no basis for now. What does this mean for McLaren? Uh, This is actually part of money that they kind of had been counting on. This is going to change other than more stickers on their car and more embroidery on the driver's suits. This is not going to mean anything further it's not gonna they're, they're not gonna be a partner that's gonna make or break uh in, in in mclaren's success or anything like that um but look out for the return of john of the johnny walker brand uh to the mclaren's for sure how is that is it gonna change delivery probably not <laughs> yeah not really <clears throat> yeah yeah i don't think it will it's it's all in the convoluted state that things are right now because like you said uh mike Earlier, you 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 posed a question. You said, uh, "So what what is the incentive of joining F one?" Right. Mm. With this article about, uh, uh, for example, about Mexico making three quarters of a billion dollar, which is a total lie. Yeah. Bernie like wants it out there the word that you know F one is a great investment, right? right? Yeah. But if you're a sensible team like Volkswagen, you would come like you would look at the whole proposition and you would say, you know what? Right now, the politics of F1 are so messed up. And because there's absolutely no guarantee of continuity and stability of, of the rules, it doesn't make sense for anybody, not like let alone a car company, for anybody to spend the hundreds of millions of dollars that you need to spend in F1. It's, it's just, it, it, it makes very little sense. Unless you go the, the Haas way, but that, that has still to be proven, man. 
So we we still don't know if how ha- good. Haas isn't selling any cars. No, they're they, yeah, sell, they're, they're, they're in it for a completely different reason. Right. Exactly. Yeah, for for a, for a car manufacturer, for a car brand to associate itself with F1 right now, it's a tough decision. It's something that you really really have to think about it. And if you spend enough time to think about it, you might more often than not come to the conclusion that it's not worth it. Yeah, I think that's what a lot of the manufacturers are thinking right now. But it's really on F1 and Bernie and everybody for 2017 to lock down some rules and maybe maybe even say we're going to keep these rules for a couple of years. Listen, but <sighs> what happens like like what happened is that we have a situation right now where all the efforts in F1 are being spent in solving problems like two weeks ahead or mm. you know you know that, that, that are like a year away there is no clear and this is what everybody's complaining about the state of things right now in f1 there is no clear long-term plan there is no clear long-term vision this like because at the to me at least the way i see things at the end of the day no matter what what they do to the show no matter what they do to fix you know either qu- qualifying rules or or if they if they introduce reverse grids or if they you know or, or if they bring like right. like uh power uh, uh power bricks like in like, like in mario kart where like somebody gets a power up even if they somehow institute that into f1 <laughs> somehow even if they did it's not going to fix what the core problem is because they're looking at audience numbers, right, from, from Nielsen or whatever. They're looking at audience numbers from the TV uh, or, or, or cable TV subscriptions, mm-hmm. and they're saying there's less subscriptions. So how do we fix this? We fix this uh, by uh, doing stupid shit to the show. No, that is not what's going on. Right. Like Their, their view is so narrow, yeah. so narrow-minded, that they're not taking into consideration – a whole bunch and this is what we, we we've been harping on this for so long pretty much since we started yeah <laughs> this was our main problem and yeah. right now we okay. i think this is <clears throat> excuse me really the biggest story today and the three stories that you just talked about mm-hmm. are i think related to the this this problem the illegal download story take so, it away take it away because but, we have people right now on the chat motoring more and luke listen to this so I, saw, I saw this yesterday i haven't i'm not sure i must have but if you check kate walker from motorsport.com has written 86 articles this is the first one i noticed i've been talking about this we've been talking about this all year <clears throat> this is the first time i'm excited the first time we've seen an article written about the illegal watching of F1. On on what could be described as a um, popular mainstream F1 news source, right? Yeah. Motorsport.com well, has... This is the first, like, sort of acknowledgement of this. Take it away. I haven't seen this on any of the news sites at all before, mm-hmm. or actually with any other sport before. Because as y- <laughs> this alleges, and as I've seen on Twitter, other sports have started recently... I think it's a bragging thing, I guess, posting their pay-per-view numbers, their Sunday night TV numbers, their Twitter numbers for during a game, their website views during a, a sporting event, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. F1, as we all know, is against a lot of this uh, pff, doing stuff online. Bernie Ecclestone's an old, old man. Yeah. Doesn't know or understand the internet, thinks it's stupid, I guess. But... If you go back like 10 years, 12 years, 15 years, a lot of F1 is the biggest sport in, uh, outside the Olympics and the World Cup one-off events. F1 is the biggest most watched sport, boasting 600, well, yeah. international, uh, boasting uh, 600 million after, views. After the World Cup, I mean, it, it never has gotten World Cup figures. But <clears> yes, go and on. And Olympics, but those are yeah. one-off, yes, one-off right, events. Every, every four years or whatever. It is the most watched Yearly. series championship. Yeah. What they're boasting numbers, 600 million viewers a year. That, was, in the, that was back in the day. Yeah, not, not so long ago, but yeah. in the past decade, we've been hearing numbers like 400 and less million. Right. Which is like a 30% decrease, which is huge. Oh. But nobody's taken into account Sky and other, which is in a couple countries now, Italy, Germany, Sky, England, yeah. Sky, a couple languages, which is a pay service. You buy a 
yearly or monthly subscription. Oh, for the know. Sky Go, you mean? Sky Go, Sky Sky F1 channel. You don't get that for free. If you want Sky Sports F1 channel, no, that's not included. That's a separate F1 only channel that you buy if you live in the countries that provide it. Other countries have pay service. Uh, <clears throat> Britain with the free service like Channel Four, which just got their transferred from BBC. They're doing only ten races. Mm-hmm. There's not a lot. And if you want to watch sort of free, like you can watch NBC Sports in North America or the TSN in Canada, uh, Canada, you're going to be watching commercials. A a lot of commercials missing parts of the race. But there's no option to watch it online as a pay. I've been saying since... Before I mean, we started this podcast, you and me talked about listen, man, if you th- could there pay is 10 if you live in race. Britain, for example, and if you live in, 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 in other countries like Australia where where F one maybe has more of a significant uh chunk of the male nice twenty five to forty five audience or whatever, right? If 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 you're in those countries, then maybe but what happens is that Ecclestone, the way that he looks at the whole thing is that his responsibility, as far as you can see it, is that it ends at at providing the world feed and you know the the five other channels or whatever you know the 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 pit lane channel the the the, 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 the onboard yeah he provides all the five or four or or so feeds Mm -hmm. and that is where his responsibility ends then he passes the rest of the responsibility of promoting digitally or whatever the sport and and package it you know whichever way you want add whatever commentary you want Mm -hmm. to the individual broadcasters who because they are from each different country usually have a contract for just that country mm. so this is like don't you think that's like, like you, you would be mistaken 100 percent if you think for a second that sky uh if in, in in england is not looking like it, their dream would be to open up their sky go for the world at large and and and, ha- and have their content out there to make as much money as possible but if but it was their dream they would because do it. Because no, because their their contract restricts oh, yeah, them yeah, to yeah. Britain, so and, then, and each country's <laughs> contracts restrict them to, to 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 that country, and you know whatever we have uh, channels like TSN or Foxtel in Australia uh, in Australia that what they do is that they so they buy like through like through FOM, um, FOM basically like lines up a contact. Uh, with Sky, where they can get the commentary from Sky, as well as you right. know, the, you know, but basically like get like what Sky shows during the race. But yeah, that's not it, helping F one, right? Uh, it's F one at the top. The Sky is being helped by selling their commentary. Just they're selling the Brundle Croft right. package, right? That we have good commentary if you want to use it. Yeah, but th- let me explain how deep this really goes, and I want to give Kate Walker the credit because she apologizes in this article for writing so much negativity and <clears throat> we've talked about this a lot too is that part of f1's problem is all the negative news that these guys are writing man write some positive news about the negative stories at least yeah like it's not that hard man you're shitting on everything nobody wants to read all that <clears throat> so they're, they're 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 like shitting on things and then then not giving any advice oh, or man. like yeah. Being like, oh, what if they tried this or what if they tried that? It's just kind of like, this is broken. Yeah, so like a, conser- <laughs> a conservative <laughs> estimate is that the TV numbers are off by maybe 20%, which is huge. That puts yeah. the numbers really close to what they used to be, 20%. If it's 400 million on TV, there's another 100 million people that are watching the races. It doesn't have to be live. I don't watch mm. a lot of them. I don't watch live. I'm gonna this Australian race. I'm not gonna see it live. Mm. And even if I was at home, some sometimes I'll be like, all right, this weekend I got the time. I'm gonna stay up till five in the morning and watch it live. But a lot of times I don't. I just stay away from the news and watch it on on Monday or yeah. so, or yeah. in the afternoon on Sunday after it's been on two a.m. here. The difference is huge. The streaming numbers are really hard because. There's so you could find a hundred illegal streams in all qualities and languages. You can watch it in Polish, watch, and it's gonna be shit quality. Afterwards, there's all kinds of torrents from the real torrent sites, the private torrent sites, and then leaks to download sites that are paid, like MegaShare and all those. Yeah, yeah, they add up to hundreds of millions of views in yeah. the end. It's a lot. Yeah. I think I think I think we need to go through so, this for for the. Um, for the sake 
of our viewers and listeners. So let's go. Let's go through that again because check this out. There are options. So and sorry, and sorry to interrupt because I, I feel like we we can harp on this right now. Um, anybody that's listening, anybody that's watching, if your problem right now is how to get good quality free coverage, all you need to do is like all you need to have is a computer. Or something like a Chromecast. Come hang out at Betty's with us. Or call, yeah, come hang, if you're in Toronto, come hang out at Betty's with us. <laughs> there are alternatives for you out there. Do not think that you need to. Even if you're in the UK, even if you're in a country where like where you get uh, this this guy, uh, uh feed, but with some commercials, don't settle for less. There are options available. This is what the internet See, was. It's all about. Last year was that search, like my friend's searches. friend's house. Google I, this. I forget his name. Yeah. But allegedly, some he was using something called a stream. Yeah, well, my friend's friend, I forget his name, but he was. I think he <laughs> used something called a stream. Yeah, Google a stream. I think it was pretty easy to find some links that yeah. he, he he showed. I think he was watching a race live on there. <laughs> I think those things. Exist. Friend sounds pretty smart. Go- Google a streams. Google F one torrents. Not my friend, my friend's the, friend. There's friend's far friend. far removed from myself. Absolutely. There's sources out there. People can watch F one live even for free right now with very decent quality we are at a point where the technology is this and you know what sky channel four polish whatever language you choose the problem is that right now because the people that are in charge of f1 are thinking so far in the past the fans that want to change and we can really just changing really fast yeah but in the past nonetheless yeah they're thinking in the past we have to if the change has to come from the fanhood and they need and they need to feel the pinch mm. of their wallets. Let's not underestimate these people's, um, you know, instinct for survival. If it comes down to it, and if the only viable option for FOM to continue existing as a provider of F1 content is to make everything available online and streamable, they will do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? If that's yeah, yeah. the only way out. So let's make it the only way out. Anybody that's out there and is still <laughs> watching, still paying for Sky... If you're listening to this podcast and still paying for Sky, I implore you, cancel your subscription right now. Watch it online. There's ways. Mm-hmm. There's there's so many ways out there. You just got to do your research. Blue screen of death. The last time this happened was on during this podcast, and it <laughs> just happened the again. The blue screen. Look at it. This computer <laughs> told me to fuck myself over and over again. <laughs> I'm about to smash it. But, seriously, anyway, go on. <clears throat> the biggest, I think... This doesn't really affect the viewers. If you're watching on TV with commercials, if you're watching through a legit paid service that doesn't have commercials, if you're stealing the races, at the end of the day, it affects the people that pay for advertising the most and the people writing these articles about how F1 has gone to shit because no one's watching it. The value for CVC has gone down extraordinarily. There, Three or four years ago, there was a move to float formula one on the stock exchange they couldn't get they couldn't, they couldn't get that done they couldn't get it done no, be, they could, they couldn't partly that because done. of the viewership well, and engagement numbers that are not there there's CBC, no engagement because cbc capital partners who ultimately own the biggest chunk of f1 they are uh a venture capitalist let's let's not forget that this is at the root of a lot that's fucked up in f1 right now everybody cvc a venture capitalist firm owns the majority of the shares of Delta Topco, which is the company that eventually owns everything in, a, in NF1 promoting, and their main pro, the, their main objective for existing is to extract as much profit from every single one of their assets. Their assets at one point included many many things, but right now include a F1, and F1 is not at the position where it used to be for many reasons for everything that we've been talking about so you can sell F1 right now for the pro- for you know whatever their expectation would be whatever they paid for it if they tried to sell F1 their shares in F1 mm-hmm. right now they wouldn't they might get their money back but that's not what they're after so instead of doing that they're keeping F1 in their hands and doing something that financial people call bleeding the asset which means they're just going to try to like squeeze every single penny as much as possible Ooh out of F1 straight to their investors. And that is why teams are not getting money, why things are not going forward in F1, why a lot of, a lot of it is messed up. Mm-hmm. And what, we, it, what everybody has to do is we, ha- we have to push for that. We have to, as fans, make it so that 
CVC gets away from it. The sooner that we can get rid of CVC, mm. uh, CVC's involvement, the better F1 will be in the long term. So here's here's the the point of this whole counting the illegals is that CVC, their a lot of their trouble, their value, what they what they place, and the amount that they can sell advertising space for, mm. or anyone that owns any space, the the boards, the billboards that you see on TV. Yeah. The side, the walls of the cars, the drivers' suits, the TV commercials. Sometimes when you watch these "quote unquote" illegal streams, yeah. the commercials are included. You're still yeah. see, unless yeah. you really get it, like a lot of times I end up watching them. A lot of UK bet. This is not applicable to me specifically. It's UK betting and stuff, but you can skip those commercials if you're not lazy. But a lot of times you can end up watching them. Mm. You're still seeing all the the billboards on the screen the cars those numbers are those advertisements are sold up based on the number of tv watchers not including the illegal ones and like i've said before other sports like i know for specifically the ufc and in the mma world has made it easy for 10 bucks a month to stream their events yeah so and i know somebody's gone to jail the somebody's gone to jail for streaming ufc mma events because they have the power to really go after streamers because they've made it easy to watch their stuff right right the same as f1 they want people whether they don't want the illegal viewers obviously as much as the people that buy the pay-per-views and pay for fox sports on that side but if you're watching you're watching Mm. right and i don't think f1 really can go after the illegal stuff and jail streamers and stuff right now because they'd be losing a lot of viewers yeah i think they probably know that yeah but i lost this article not because my computer died but i can't remember (laughs) hashtag rip danny's laptop yes let's pull the screen (laughs) off off the base (laughs) there's a company i forget i can't find the name right now Mm -hmm. because it died but the company that does the world estimates and they they base the numbers on an average Mm -hmm. which youtube viewers kind of don't like when you watch youtube sometimes there's three people in the room so one view is kind of three yeah that's how tv numbers are measured right they do an average they'll be like 3.2 people are watching on australia right maybe mm-hmm. in germany it's 4.1 or different countries have a different average people in front of the tv none of those are le- but the biggest company that measures the world's tv numbers doesn't even try to guess how many people are looking online hmm. And at, at the end of the day, stuff like what we started this with, yeah. Sauber not being able to pay their team because they can't sell enough advertising, make money from their race to boost their car and make money from racing. Um, VJ Malia and his Sahara guy, they're obviously maybe fraudsters, allegedly, <laughs> but they're not selling advertising as much as they could. The yeah. whole thing with Johnny Walker, McLaren, Chandon, that whole fight between them could be eased if there were if they were sure or at least on paper accounting for mm. the uncertainty of the illegal viewers mm-hmm. that are there there's hundreds of millions of people watching yes. illegal look at when we do betties that we, we've done it legally yes. on television nbc but we've had over 20 people in a room all watching the race together yep. everyone's getting advertised to the whole time mm-hmm. i don't know man it's what, something we've been talking about thanks to Kate, I'm oh, sorry if I lost your name now because my computer died. <laughs> but at least the d- discussion has started, and hopefully it will continue. That's 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 all that that's all that that in, that's needed the, sometimes. Just a point of discussion, and like this is a this is a movement that I can I can tell you right now, flat out fever is fully behind and will be tracking for the rest of the year until things get done. Let's be honest, we're going to be harping about this mm-hmm. all the time. And if anybody, honestly, anybody listening out there is not convinced about streaming or, or has had, you know, has hurt this or that, that the quality is not as good or whatever, or, or needs needs some guy, needs some pointers, email me, email us, <laughs> t- 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 tweet us, whatever. We'll, we'll, we'll be we'll happy. You know it's good. We'll be happy to at least point you in the right direction. Resources are there. This stuff exists. Let's make it like we. I th- I think that right now we're in a position where we as fans that we haven't been before, where we individually, all of us, if there's collective action, we can make a difference on this and we can push the balance in the right direction. It's time to stop just complaining about F1 mm. and making a difference. This is where Bernie's lack of internet 
<clears throat> internet savviness uh, works in his favor because the F1 Twitter and YouTube page and everything don't push out stuff so there's less followers mm. so there's less of a voice to tell him to kiss, kiss everyone kiss our asses <laughs> but <clears throat> at least it, it started right like this is why we also why we started the podcast with the Adelaide and Melbourne and Australia season starting stuff because it gets technical and boring but it's really important this is one of the big things behind f1 if there's a 20 percent real difference in the viewership numbers based on quote-unquote illegal numbers all those quote-unquote illegal viewers are seeing all the ads that aren't being accounted for or sold or pulled in, into the the top level value the delta topco value of the company that trickles all the way down to everything man. yeah absolutely. and the negative article is talking shit where there's not really the negativity it's popular as hell oh yeah once you get into into uh -huh. f1 the way that you know for example we are you realize that like there's there's still hope for that and that's what makes me i think maybe even more angry than anything else because there's still hope for the sport it's still a great sport there's oh, still yeah. so much to it there's there's there is a you could say that so many things out there right now in the modern world that there isn't a place for like pandas mm -hmm. like <laughs> you know what i mean like <laughs> like uh <laughs> like like sport, sports like polo yeah. not really a place for that in the modern world right but there is a place for formula one Absolutely. Is. isn't water polo an olympic sport no no no, no. Like, 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 like polo like polo with the, polo? With the horses aren't whatever. both polos olympic sports no 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 not the horse polo not anymore no. <laughs> not the horse one <laughs> can still get those shirts though yeah <laughs> but you you know what i mean like it's there's still a place for f1 it's F1 is still incredibly exciting. I'm I'm a hopeful the same way that uh, that Martin Brundle is. Like he 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 says time and again, like you know what? But no matter what all this messed up shit when it's happening, it's it, there's still hope for F1, and and it's because there is. And and and, I, and I'm a big hopeful, and I think that this kind of stuff, and hopefully 2017 will 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 bring at least um, st the stability. That the sport needs to make the changes it has to mm. you know and it will. it will thank you kate walker if anyone wants to read the full article it's called analysis judging the size of f1's illegal fan base the, the links oh, oh, for uh, pretty much everything that we've ta been talking about are going to be in the description of the episode links at the YouTube. bottom this is a popular article though it's over thirty thousand views for even for motorsport.com is pretty big yeah hopefully this catches on and uh generates more news something positive yeah i think that's the, the state of affairs in f1 we'll keep you guys up to date with the more politics and bullshit that happens yeah absolutely and i guess we'll be right back with the uh the bits the little little stories for a silly season cool see you guys in a sec the <laughs> so to keep it in uh, in theme with the with the Australian Grand Prix, obviously the biggest star in Australia for the Australian Grand Prix is going to be none other than Mr. Danny Rick. Danny Rick. Can, can I quickly say yeah. fuck the FOM sure. because of what we just talked about in part B. Mm -hmm. Our first video today, in part, a. part A, has been taken down for copyright infringement for showing Danny Rick's lap of Australia, which is happening this weekend, which they want people to watch. And people to talk about, and we were watching it and talking about it about an hour ago, and they instantly took that video down. Don't and worry. Kiss our ass. Uh, the first part well, of our episode. That seems like a bot. That's like, that's the, bot. Yeah, right? it's probably a bot, but the first part it's of our robot, episode. But it's taken down. Will be available later. We'll edit It'll that It'll be out. available, but we got to cut this out now. Yeah, we said some gold there. That Remember? was gold, man. Danny Rick <laughs> is so cool. <laughs> Danny Rick so cool. Look at that mustache, man. I want one. <laughs> <laughs> so this is uh, straight from Reddit. I mean, we make no concessions about that. But somebody on Reddit <laughs> posted this this thing of of, of Danny Rick. Obviously, by Danny Rick, we mean Daniel Ricciardo, F1 driver. This is the uh, final se silly segment of the silly season. So <laughs> yeah, of the winter the, silly season to the max. Um, is, is, so he's, he's he's kind of on a green screen uh, with a green screen background, pointing somewhere. Obviously, for some some sort of promotional thing. Um, but. <laughs> uh the, the formula one subreddit really really took it 
and and and, and really play, played around with this. Really and ran with it. Really ran with it all, <laughs> uh, creating some 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 really cool stuff like this one. Here's Danny Rick, <laughs> <laughs> Birth of Venus. <laughs> He's uh, high up there. This is Scene Chapel. How good is that? On the roof. <laughs> yeah. Um, there, there, there he is. <laughs> In the drop it like it's hot drop video. It like it's hot. It's hot. There, there he is, Cheeky. dropping it. And it's my favorite. <laughs> so far. Thanks to thanks I, to I uh, Photoshop work here. Look at yeah. That. Thanks well, to well, Reddit well, user uh, Blanchimont. He's he's I think he's 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 a regular contributor of the F one subreddit. He made this this joke. Guys, if if you're listening and you haven't seen this, honestly, check out the links. Uh, it's a yeah. hilarious picture of uh, you remember when Alonso was you know places Alonso would rather be. <laughs> I, do, I do remember that. Yeah. One. Then then he's getting his uh, his, uh, his, his 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 nose pick. But the bottom anyway. right there, the the time chart, <laughs> knockout zone, no time, no time, no time for a little, this is this is brilliant. <laughs> but no, D Danny Rick has definitely been busy ahead of. Um, uh, the, the Formula One Grand Prix, like it's his home Grand Prix. He's very proud of, of being Australian, and he's he's been around and doing multiple activities such as being a DJ. Yeah, well, if, if you oh, yeah. if you notice quick, quickly, this picture is a bit of foreshadowing for this year. They were already calling Q1 bottom drivers in the knockout zone. <laughs> Are they going to change that to elimination zone? Who yeah, knows? Probably. Who, Who knows? knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? That's the one thing they couldn't change. That's why it took so long to change the graphics. Did to change that word? Knockout to elimination. <laughs> took, took some <laughs> heavy, heavy software programming. We might not be able to get that done until Spain, guys. Those programmers are working now. Race time. five or six. We can't get it done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, DJ Danny Rick. Look at that. I mean, he's, he's clearly just playing from like an iPod. Yeah. Oh, look at him go. <laughs> but he's, he's DJ Danny Rick, man. <laughs> there was a cool video I thought is I had seen. Is he playing right in front of uh, his Formula One car? I think so. <laughs> yeah, it is the matte one. That's the new one. <laughs> don't don't crack under pressure. Hashtag. All right, post this. We, we we sort of talked about this earlier though, or you you mentioned it about the number of characters in F1. Right. I think l f people are like bugging Lewis or whatever. I don't understand that, but and then Ricciardo is following his lead a little bit. He's always been uh, one of the more Likeable? Flamboyant, likable, out there, energetic, sociable guys. He's got the mustache goofing around. He's got the cool accent, too. I don't know if he's going to drop a mixtape anytime soon. <laughs> but there were, I, I could I, see him like in like some sort of rock band or something like that. Yeah, that's, yeah. What, that's what I was saying. I thought I saved it, but I can't find it. From like Two weeks ago, he was on stage with some big rock band singing a song with them at a concert. He's out there. He's, he's, mm. he's talking a lot of shit. He's... Uh, Made a, b a lot of big statements about F1 being too easy recently. He's been at the, the <laughs> front of... There's a few drivers saying it, but he's been at the front of that. Mm. He's also one of the biggest pushers of the, the Halo. Oh, Jesus. Oh, really? But yeah, yeah. My point is, though, he's he's been one of the characters. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm having, so, like, a hard time getting, like... I'm not a fan of Raikkonen just on principle. Like, the, the guy looks like he just doesn't care about anything. He's just like a Terminator. But, Wait. Uh, at, at the same time, I think some of the other drivers, like K Mag, like his social media teams, are probably forcing him to do some of it. But he's been sort of characterizing himself a little more. Yeah. Alonso keeps saying all kinds of dumb stuff. Oh my god. He flip flops <laughs> and changes his. M I love him as a driver, but come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> but Mercedes got the best, or McLaren's got the best chance. Chassis. I I had a chat while I talked to Mercedes. I almost took Lewis's spot. We almost raced together. Oh, uh, but no, McLaren's gonna be my team forever. This is over the past two weeks. McLaren's my last team in F1. I might change that. I might take a sabbatical. <laughs> Come on. Oh my god. He he is talking a lot of shit, but what like what what a fall from grace he's had though. And it would be sad. It would honestly be sad if this is the last chapter of his career. I'm not saying that Alonso is going to be gone uh, in 2017 because he's not. He's right. just, he's, gonna stick he's still that good of a driver yeah. and that desirable. Mm. Um, yeah. and, that, and that's why he's worth a lot of money on uh, Fantasy F1. But <laughs> yeah, that's right. Every, look, at, look it up. Look at up all the leagues. Yeah. He's so expensive. He's one of the, in the Fantasy League, all of them, he's one of the hardest drivers to bring onto your team because, well, it's, it's because I mean, he's the x he's got the x factor to his style right well love him love him or hate him he's still like 
you know what I mean? Like, there, there's so many people that are so against Alonso, especially, like, since his 2007 year with uh, with Lewis and McLaren. Um, or or was it 2009? I think I'm, I think I'm wrong by a couple of years. But it, what, well, yeah, when, well, yeah, whenever he wasn't uh, with Lewis and McLaren, whatever he did there, it got a lot of people pissed off, especially the British audience, obviously. And, and, and a lot of people don't look favorably um, on Alonso. But... Even if you don't, you have to respect that the guy is, without much room for a doubt, one of the best drivers mm. in the sports yeah. history. Mm. Really, history. You'll yeah. say that. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I mean, if you if you had to pick a top twenty, mm. most people would agree that Alonso's in there. Wow. Yeah. yeah, I think for for all time, yeah. yeah. And he's also like. Some of his craziness, his, ex, his eccentricity, mm-hmm. and all that to make him a likable guy. He's awesome. Yeah. He is the. He also has that cool accent. Uh, the, way, <laughs> the way, he not even his accent, but the the way he, he talks, the way things. he phrases things. Yeah, yeah. This, this is great. But he p- obviously he pissed off Ferrari as well when he left. There was yeah. a bit of animosity there in the team because he talked shit about the engine, and uh, obviously he left too soon. But maybe not. Maybe he'll come back. But he talked the other day, too, about what he's going to do when he leaves or if he's leaving McLaren, if he's going to stick around. Is he going to even finish the whole season? He said he wants to go back to go-karting. He said he'd like to race go-karts and get back to his roots once he retires from F1. And he's, maybe maybe with a team. The way probably. I forget the way he worded it. I don't have the article. But, yeah, I mean, like, pro- like I think professionally. But yeah. in his F1 retirement... He said he'd like to go back to his roots, the essence of racing, and try competing in go karts. <laughs> That'd be amazing to compete oh, alongside. I would, I would watch some go kart racing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Aside was from a, True Racer, there, there I, was I do watch on, actually go, a bit of go kart racing. There was a thing on Reddit, maybe like about a week or two ago. It might have yeah. been on the Formula One subreddit, but uh, oh, maybe it was our videos. But uh, it was just like a GoPro strapped to like a very, very fast go kart. Nice. And <laughs> I watched it and I, I was scared. I was like, how are you fucking not dead yeah <laughs> like holy fuck they're just really low and wide but they go fast and oh they turn hard oh my god and it was all um uh like hay bales and the yeah, guys, yeah, yeah, yeah clipping them constantly i'm like oh oh my nope <laughs> i could barely watch it just because like i said before the show uh, somebody on twitter followed us and asked if we would follow his daughter as a racer yeah. oh, like, cool. well, and what the, uh, some of these guys did they're like seven eight nine ten years old racing those go-karts doing over a hundred kilometers an hour Nope. Nope. One gear, you get into the shifter cards, man. Oh. It's craziness, man. It is pretty crazy. We gotta hit the four hundred one mini indie as a podcast excursion one day. Oh, that'd be great. I've never raced those. They do like sixty, but it's indoors. Looks fun though. Let's do it. Yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, I'll do <clears> it. but like, I, I, I want to I I race against some ten year olds in a hundred kilometer an hour cart. <laughs> <Yeah>. I think. <laughs> I think I don't know. I think I get my ass kicked. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> um, guys, more news that came out this week that I kind of random was about uh, the long away to change to the livery of the Renault team. <laughs> Renault, oh, no. yeah, yeah. So they they've sort of been hinting the black's not our color. We sort of did it temporarily. This this one, we've been guessing that they're gonna do the negative of that. All the yellow bits will be black all the black bits will be yellow now look at that there it is we're not we're not on there right now actually yeah throw it up throw it up let's see the original yeah this is the this This is the original this is what was how it stands now this is on the launch day as there were delivery no not march 7th this is a a different car 11 49 a.m eastern time march 7 2016 yeah the unveiling of the Renault sport livery livery here it is on a beach whatever they're uh, matte. An- another team going surfboard. with the matte. <laughs> like, clearly, this, this, is, mat. this is very far. <coughs> and they were doing some sort of, like, promo, Yeah, obviously. This yeah. is a surfboard. Yeah, it's, be- just, it's, a, it's a surfboard for an F1 car. How ridiculous is this commercial going to be? <laughs> before, before, you change, before you change the page here, if you look at the comments, a lot of people are saying, this looks like... Um, <laughs> Can I get out of here? This is the most colorful car. Like I love the livery. They're gonna stand out, man. They're gonna yeah. stand out a lot. I, a bright yellow car like this for for Hano. Why not, man? But a yeah, lot of people no, in the excited. comments there, are like this, this kind of looks. The nose looks weird. It seems like this might be an older <laughs> Renault. This is from the 2000s. No, it's not. Look at the next tweet. Julian Palmer, on his personal Twitter, 
There's him and uh, K Mag chilling on the same beach. Oh snap! So, it's real. It That's could st- it could still be. I mean, for promotional purposes, they might not be actually able to use the current year's car. They, it might actually be a different, uh, like a, a different year's car with the with the right. I I, I believe that that is the right livery. It might yeah. be a different year's car, but that but that that is gonna be the right livery, and that is gonna be a good livery. I think that that, that I like that look. Man, I love the yellow. Yeah. I'm, I'm a huge fan. Has of came with the idea of like making his car yellow, and everybody was yeah, this no, loving they, it. They said gold and black, gold and black. Yeah, almost it was like the opposite of what Lotus was. Yeah, yellow true. and go- black and gold. <laughs> there was gold and black. It looked cool, man. Yeah, with those black rims for this Mercedes, that's gonna be a, a Haas really looks, nice car. Haas looks like the old McLaren, like the Vodafone McLaren, but <laughs> at least it's unique to them now. But it's not unique to history. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever, Ferrari spiced it up. There's a couple, but I, I think I like this the most. They stand out. Favorite livery, perhaps. Yeah, perhaps. Well, we gotta see it on the. I gotta, on see, the them the I gotta see them all together. Year, yeah. The 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 camo livery yeah, well, that didn't like make black, a reappearance. The, the black and white. Yeah. Oh, man, yeah, man. They put it on their cool. sleeves this year. That's why those shirts cost three hundred fifty <laughs> bucks. <laughs> <laughs> nobody nobody could see your arms. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, dude, what happened to your arms? Where'd they go? <laughs> How about this shirt for 350 bucks, man? You can't see them anymore. My, ar- <laughs> my arms are camo. Puma style. Faster together. Can't even see them. Um, a, lo- a lot of what other people have been talking about, though. Uh, <laughs> let, let alone, like, the, ba- the bad news of F1. Uh, you know, p- put aside everything else. Um, put aside this silliness. <laughs> Uh, has has definitely been about like the future of some of these races and the the races that are coming this you know with the influx of the new races and whatever um and and, and something recently also came up about Baku right like they 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 cuz when we looked at the very first pictures of Baku we saw like that that cool like you know the uh, even um Ted Kravitz like said like the soon to be famous turns eight nine and ten complex or whatever right I, per- personally i've been following it close if yeah. you look on our twitter i've posted a few things over the past month or two i'm really this year baku is on my radar that's my number one anticipated race for this year but yeah sky sky sent ted over there to, yeah. for a weekend to, and we, uh, we check saw out. we saw some pictures that wouldn't look sick well that that did look sick <clears throat> um and mm-hmm. i guess we we brought it up shortly when we saw those pictures of that specifically that turn eight and nine with the cobblestone. We said like, look at how cool the cobblestone is gonna be. But like we, we, at that point, I'm pretty they're sure like, we mentioned it. We said, we're like, what are, what are they gonna do with that cobblestone? Either yeah, the cars are gonna probably slide around on the stone, or else they'll be going fast enough that the vacuum will be like unsettling, sucking the stones up and stuff. Nerp. If you look on the uh, the links there, you can see. And then there was talk about there'd be some sort of uh, temporary temporary covering done so i'm not really sure if you the main straight the front straight the uh I, I don't know what the street's called in baku but it's the front the ocean front boulevard of baku is is paved regular that's it's not cobblestone but they've repaved it but here's a close-up now uh, is this on the screen yeah yeah so this picture here is it's not i don't know what you'd call it it's, it's almost like their streets are tiled like that's the road like that one there well that's a cobblestone man but yeah, look how small they are. They're almost you. It's like bathroom. That's, that's the, what the, <laughs> except for them be, not being black and white. That's yeah. what my bathroom looks like. Yeah. <laughs> Those are small tiles for a street, man. Cobblestone. Yeah. You think of like at least big stones. You know, like you can fill some. You don't have to put thousands yeah. down to do one intersection. But as far as we know, do you see those strings for the level and everything? That this is temporary. I don't know if they're gonna pull up this paving look, um, look, after man, the race. That's weekend. gonna be that's gonna be like a good fifteen centimeters of pavement right on top of a cold. They can't asphalt. be going that thick. Well, whatever. At least ten centimeters. Look at that. No. Yes. One or two. You think that this two is just three. one or two centimeters? Two, three centimeters. So you think that the, at the end they're just gonna rip all this up and then do the same thing next, next year? Next year. Either that or like I was saying. Perhaps Baku Azerbaijan has a contract for how many, however many years to host a race, and they plan because we've said like this city is hundreds of years old. Like the old city is built like the Maidens Towers built like 500 years ago. 
So if they run the race for a decade or 15 or 20 years and mm. pave it, and then they tear it up then, in the big scheme of things, it's not a huge deal, is it? <laughs> in, the, in, the, in the history of billions of years of Earth, if they pave over yeah, that stone for 20 the, years, is it a... Man, but... <laughs> I don't know. The, I don't know. I'm just there, throwing there, out. there is a real concern that the way that somebody in the administration of the city of Baku, <laughs> Azerbaijan, might have approved yeah. this shit with no real plan to actually take it back up that that is a possibility like yeah how do you they, pu- how do you pull that up cuz asphalt if you don't know is gravel and tar and you just stir it up and then you drive like, a, a a steamy roller over it, it like that like get, basically if, if 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 you're if you're interested in 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 seeing the the streets of Baku with their full cobblestone maybe get out there right now before they completely like, tear away the street the street i live on I just had it. new new storm drains put in so they repaved my whole street it's i live on uh, it's nowhere near as wide as this you can fit like two cars and nowhere near as long and it's a stinky process it's hot makes a lot of mess there's black stains everywhere these trucks there's we saw pictures two three weeks ago they started this they were on my street for like a week and a half to do 100 meters. This is a, I'm just trying to paint that this is a huge job. It's a huge undertaking. <laughs> There's my house is like 20 street or my street is like 20 houses long. This track is the second longest circuit or third longest now in the whole series. Six kilometers. Now, granted, my street is not even 600 meters. No, but 100 meters. But let's <laughs> l- let's okay, putting it in perspective. Not all of it happens in areas that aren't paved already. Right, but like but even I said, like does, the front so. the front main street was paved and they yeah. repaved it. Yeah, they all paved well, it fresh. They, they have to for uh, you know to satisfy FIA requirements, right? Yeah, cracks and bumps and whatever. Yeah. But yeah, I, I don't know, man. And if you look at if you go through this gallery a little more. There's only five pictures, but Mike, yeah, Mike, switch up these pictures one or two more. Like, okay, not this one, or maybe if you go back one there, back. Or, okay, just yeah, yeah, keep yeah. going through the next one again. So see on the right where those three guys in the yellow jacket are. <laughs> yeah, look what they're standing on, and just in front of them, it almost looks like they're rolling out sheets of. Mm tar or something so maybe they put like there's uh, another one there or something too right yeah so maybe they put out some kind of protective sheets and then paved over that so the tar doesn't stick I between the cobblestones very or? unlikely yeah <laughs> but it, it seems so crazy that this city is built by it's not like modern construction this is all a city built of stone and cobblestone yeah. and and carved is like you know what I mean? It's like I'm worried about the vibrations of the cars that are going to knock down some of the buildings. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just like the history of the way this this no, city was built to last forever, and they just paved over the cobble streets. Doesn't make sense. S- small price to pay, I'm sure the mayor <laughs> said. I guess like look at Toronto. It used to have a lot of cobbled streets too, and they're like, this is a pain in the ass, and horse shit gets in the cracks, and all this kind <laughs> of s- they just pave it, pave it all. No, Toronto's all paved. I, gu- I guess that's one way to put it. But, but uh, the thing is, this city is uh, close to 10 times older than Toronto. Oh, yeah. So, so <laughs> Toronto's two 200 something years. The city's, the full city's something almost a thousand years being set yeah. up. So who knows? <laughs> I guess we'll find out. But we'll, we'll, we'll follow the developments it's coming It's really from hard to find any details about this. Oh, absolutely. Well, I, I, think, yeah. I think we won't know f- fully for sure until like, the. Thursday of the race. Yeah. yeah, realistically. And it's probably going to be one of those situations where they're still going to be putting stuff together uh, <laughs> up until the weekend before, kind of like they did with Mexico and Russia. If, if you look from like a year ago, like Charlie, or, um, sorry, uh, Tilki's, uh, Tilki's like, like uh, plans and his proposal to build the circuit and what the pit is going to look like, where the helipads are going to go and stuff. If you, We've shown them before. You see the pictures of those areas? There's nothing there right now. There's up-to-date recent pictures. There's nothing being done. No helipads, no pit boxes, no buildings, nothing. No well, oil, hospitality. Oil is at an all-time low these days, so <laughs> their source of money is kind of hurting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it's, where it's, their money came true, from. Yeah. Um, hey, what else you got? Uh, let's get this Wookiee thing out of the way because... <laughs> To finish off, <laughs> I'm down. Okay. To, just before we finish, I got a good a good finisher behind this. All right, all right. Or do you want to finish with this? Let's finish with the Wookiee. No, we we can we can do your finisher. Go for it. Right, yeah. 
<laughs> what, what, this what, is a, what's your finisher? I'm gonna put it on after. Oh, there's there's no picture for the finisher. Oh, okay. What's this guy's name? Will Buxton. Will Buxton. Will Buxton. Buxton. Will Buxton works for NBC, and uh, he's kind of a uh, his own character on television. This is him uh, at testing, I guess, just describing his the, cars. the The sound of the McLaren, or the sound of the cars now with the wastegate. He claims that they're a little louder, and this is his description. This is his interpretation. Yes, his interpretation. But obviously, taking that wastegate out and shooting it straight to the back of the car means that it's kind of it's opened the throat. I'm I'm going to say we're going full Wookie on it. It's like a Chewbacca growl, like it's more growl kind of growl than like when Chewbacca's kind of excited or sad about something. So that's you know that's where it was. Wookie to full Wookie. That's where we're more throaty. So that's where we're at. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> wow. Can you can, 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 can you can you do a a, a lower wookie? <laughs> <laughs> and then to full wookie. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I can't I can't. Can, can, yeah, you got to open the throat. Yeah. As as Will Buxton <laughs> says. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was brilliant. <laughs> Thanks, Will Buxton, for that like precious, precious bit. That was amazing. Where's he from? What's he? He he, he does NBC, so he he uh, so he's with the American coverage, and he's from way back at, with the Speed Channel. But how he came to prominence actually is he was he started a fan blog. He was just a fan that had a very popular blog, and, oh, he, and then he got poached by US television, and he turns out to be like a decent broadcaster, but. If I'm honest, says shit like I, this. If I had to put in like an F1 dream, like an F1 commentating and coverage dream team, <laughs> I don't know in what position I'd put him. I'd probably like give him. He's like, the guy who gets coffees for everyone. Yeah, well, I'd put him as like a no. lane reporter that gets like a couple articles here and there. Not, not. He's he's no he's no Ted Kravitz. Right. Yeah. No. Okay. <laughs> Ted is the measure of all things. <laughs> Check this out, though. I actually got two final stories because we kind of skipped over this one. Yeah. This uh, this one just dropped early this morning. But the measure of all things in direct quotes from Helmut Marko uh, is, is Mercedes. He admitted, in terms of power, we're still part, far from the competition. Right. At least 70, 70 to 80 horsepower behind Mercedes who remain the measure of all things. But he hinted this morning that Signs are that inequality of F1 engines is to be enforced. That uh, sort of, it's kind of weird. Yesterday, Ecclestone came out and said he might actually fund the development of a new F1 engine himself. So I don't think anyone believes that he would actually do that, but it's a threat that he can work on resting his power as he's always done and will continue to do. But this is what he's wanted, though. This is what he's wanted for a while, and this is this was okay. This goes like this is a long time in the making, right? This is this goes back to a couple of years ago, especially last year when Renault or sorry, uh, Red Bull started berating Renault, talking shit because in the play before the whole automobile automobile world got shaken with the, with scandals. They had a clear goal in mind and was that uh, they were going to bring in uh, VW in some way or another or just partner with another car company, bringing another independent engine that Red Bull would partner with. And this and that all of that fell through, 100% of that fell through, and uh, Ferrari and Mercedes took control over the sport. This is what happened over the winter break. Now, Ecclestone is trying desperately to claw back some power and he's saying outrageous statements like this because he had the whole pivot of his argument is we're going to take some power back by bringing an independent re uh, engine and this is what Red Bull wants and this is also why Dietrich, uh, Dietrich uh, Mateschitz owner of Red Bull has also been going on in the media and saying you know what my future in F1 is not uh, uh, is not guaranteed but the reality but is that if like you know what if, if Dietrich Mateschitz wanted to take his money elsewhere and just terminate his F F1 pro program right now, he he would have to pay a hefty, hefty sum of money 
to Ecclestone with the Concord agreement, with, with all the agreements that he has. And if you throw the numbers, it is probably better to just stay in F1 and try to like make something later with it. And when you look, he, Dietrich Mateschitz and Red Bull as a whole, has started talking positive about the Renault engine. Even they've, even they've, they've expected that they or they've mentioned that at Canada they expect to bring an upgrade similar to what Ferrari brought midseason last year, a huge step. And <clears throat> so like you just said, Ecclestone's the alternative engine yeah. idea. His first one was to contract it out to somebody like Caterham or one of the other like um the what's the one that starts with the I M uh, God damn it. But there's one or two other engine companies that he had mentioned that he Ilmore? would Il- Ilmore consider contracting. So that's very that's Ilium, though. That's that's like that's Ilium's company. Yeah, S- that he would mention there. So he had mentioned he would consider contracting to develop an engine for the teams that couldn't afford the Ferraris and the Mercedeses. Now he said that he might pay for it himself. That's kind of been shut down instantly. But how many? Anyways, the whole point of this helmet Marco is suggesting that. The whole story has not played out, and from his his point of view, here's the quote: "There are signs that more or less <clears throat> inequality of the engines is to be enforced within two percent." So, and what we're looking at next year with the uh, fuel flow opening of the the agreement of the regulations of fuel flow could get these same engines we have now to somewhere around a thousand horsepower easily which by opening should, the fuel actually flow, should which happen should and most likely will happen that's what we're expecting Mm -hmm. with the increased downforce we're gonna just open up the fuel flow limit Mm -hmm. two percent of a thousand is about 20 horsepower and uh he said don't worry we've already won world championships with a larger deficit than that true so that's why you started this podcast with it you'd like to see the cars really all equalize and it looks like this might actually happen if if ecclestone gets his way if Ecclestone gets his way. Yeah. yeah. That is... Teams are not going to want this. This is much more coming up in F1 2016. <laughs> you know? This isn't even from Ecclestone. Ecclestone wouldn't say this. This no. is how No, no. But Ecclestone never, like, he, he uses his tentacles, his far-reaching <laughs> tentacles to put out <laughs> statements like this. Yeah. This Oily might, tendrils. <laughs> this might even be against him. You know what I mean? Depending no, which way no, Ecclestone... He wants, he, wants, he wants the independent engine. That's his deal. Yeah, but th- this would be... A, if the engines were equalized, there wouldn't need to be an independent engine. That would, no, that he, would crush you're talking it. about equalizing the engines as in offering like an equalizing factor to a new engine engine. No. No, it's not. Read this article. There are signs that equality of the engines is to be enforced by the FIA within yeah. 2%, putting them on dynos and enforcing it with the computer within... Two percent, which would mean that that also would apply for the new engine that comes in. This, yeah, one hundred percent. That's what that means. Read this article. Right. It's on yeah. Grand Prix Twenty Four Seven dot com. This came out this morning. This is on the complete contrary to bringing in a new engine. Oh, like oh, so as as an alternative, just having the current ones, the current engines equalized, equalized within two percent. This is what this is saying. This is what Helmut Marco was saying this morning. So within, I guess that's an avenue that they can choose to, to go through. Let me read a little more of the article. So with with the, with even F1 Supremo Bernie Ecclestone slamming the sports spectacle at present, Marco said it's very important that changes come in 2017. And as for the series, sounds hopeful. We're happy the car is very good, the engine's positive on the development side. But in terms of power, we're still far from the competition. 70, 80 horsepower behind Mercedes, who remain the. Mer- the measure of all things. So for him, if they could bring that deficit in the rules to 20%, he'd be happy. And he claims that he's won world championships with a larger deficit than 2%. We'll see how all this unravels. We'll see how that unravels. But yeah, this is outside, completely outside of Ecclestone's plan because he came back and said he'll pay for it himself. And then they said, maybe we'll just enforce an equalization then i don't have to build my own let's let's not forget though that yeah. and i just i i you have to look every single thing that comes out from the red bull camp yeah there's a reason as, this is the last story of the day as being as, as coming from ecclestone or at least in agreement with ecclestone yeah I, I teased another story but 
We, we've done enough today, I think. Let's, <laughs> let's save it. It's non-time time, time considering. Guys, uh, thank you so much for listening and watching our live viewers. Uh, definitely, thank you so much. Remember the contest. Check out the contest. We're announcing a contest. We're giving away Grand Prix tickets for the Canadian Grand Prix coming out this year. 2016 Canadian Grand Prix. $256 value. Submit your entries. What we're asking for is for you guys to get creative and out there. Just put anything you want related to the Canadian Grand Prix <coughs> or, or Canada or the track itself or Gilles Villeneuve. Anything that's related to Canada or the Canadian Grand Prix. Sh send us a picture. Send us a video. Send us your story. Call us in when we're live. You, you, you guys probably forget, but you can do this. You can call us in. Where, uh, just look us up. Uh, flat out fever on, on 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 Skype, or leave a uh, message so we know you're not a robot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, either way, um, send your entries. We're gonna be running this con uh, contest for the next few weeks. Six and six weeks exact. Six April twenty six. Uh, other than that, uh, we you can reach us at uh, show at flat uh, on Reddit. We're uh, flat fever at flat fever on Twitter. Flood of Fever on Facebook, even though we don't really check it as much. <laughs> Flood of Fever podcast channel on YouTube. Flood of Fever.com. All your information is there. Um, all of ours, too. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> join us at Betty's all season long. Torontonians, Ontarians, Southern Ontarians. Come out for a race. Yeah. Betty's this, on King this East. Sunday. Yeah. This Sunday, uh, the information is on the website again. This Sunday, we're going to be showing the race from two to six. So it's going to be uh, a delay broadcast. But guys, we'll hope to see you to see as many of you there. Join us on the Fantasy Leagues badger gp.com and again set up there and formula one dot udt dot co dot z a dot z a <laughs> one, one or the other not both <laughs> set yourself up a team we'll get you the league information next week you can compete with us we can compete with you no prizes, just fun in the in the fantasy leagues. That's why it's called fantasy leagues. Uh, if you like this badass tune that we're about to put on, uh, listen to bamboo.com. That's Mike's band. Woo! Man. Uh, I love you in the contest. Seriously, thanks so bamboo much for listening. And if you like what we're doing, hit subscribe. Follow us on Twitter. It means a lot to us, and it keeps us going. Yeah, absolutely. Join these two next Tuesday. I won't be back for two weeks. Oh. Bye, and Danny. Join us all there. See you guys. Thank you. Come on, computer. Dip, 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 DJ.